It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant force positively Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots back for another quarantine goddamn week of uh, this motherfucking podcast. What's happening, Andrew? I'm chilling, man. How are, how are you, Andy. bro? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Yeah. Um, Beard's coming in. Beard's coming in. I think I'm going to keep it, bro. You think you're going to keep it? I like it. I'm going to keep it. It looks dude good. Called, a dude called from London this morning on the Breakfast Club, said he'd been checking me out on my IG, told me I'm looking handsome. Gay or straight? He was gay. So it you know only it matters. matters if they're gay. O only matters when they're gay. That's it, right? bro. I don't give a fuck if a straight man called me handsome. Because guess what? If a straight man calls me handsome, you're really gay. You I think? I don't got time for scare. Exactly. You think if what a guy you? calls another guy handsome, that, that that means they're gay? I think they're gay. They just uh, don't know it yet. But I could, I could see guys and see them as handsome, right? Like I could. there's certain guys that are handsome. In conversation, right? Like if you're talking, right? And you yeah. know, you're like, oh, that's a good looking guy. But if you just are just randomly sipping your latte on the corner and you see a dude and you're like, wow, he's handsome. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think yeah. you, yeah, you had me, it's, you had me a latte, bro. It's something there. Uh -huh. I'm just saying it's something there. Like for you just to be red, because that's like, you're attracted to him. That's, can you admit that's kind of an attraction? Uh, I would say there's a difference between handsome and attraction. Talk to me. Cause so I, I find people good looking. Like I can say, oh, that person is good looking, right? Yeah. But you're not attracted to them. Like certain women are attractive, but I'm not attracted to them. Like here's a perfect example, Jessica Chastain. Do you know who she is? Never heard of her. She's, she's like I'm the, Googling. she plays like the save the day woman in every movie. Like she was in the movie where they got Bin Laden. She was a redhead. She's an interstellar. She's the redhead. She's in Molly's game. She's the redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson. No, but sure. So okay. she is beautiful. Like, she's just so beautiful. But her personality to me, I, I, in movies at least, I'm not, like, attracted to it. I'm not, Jessica I, it, Chastain. Jessica Chastain. I'm just personally not attracted to it. Um, so I think the same can be true with guys. You could look at a guy and be like, wow, that guy's really handsome. But... I'm not attracted to him. I'm not attracted to him. Gay! Son, <laughs> Gay. I'm just saying, you never found a dude, you never found a dude to be attractive. No. I never can give once. It, I, I, can, I can give it up and say a guy's good looking. You know That's what I mean? That's the but, same but, thing. What's no, no, the no, no, difference? No, no. But when I say things like that, Let I don't mean it in like- Let your toxic masculinity go. No, I, I don't have, I, I listen, I've said this conversation when I'm talking to, talking about guys, but I say good looking, but not in the sense of like, I think he's attractive. Like, say if I'm talking about TV, right? Yeah. And I'm talking about a show that I might be executive producing. I'm like, yo, that dude right there, you know, you know, he's smart. Like, everything is the talent first, right? He's smart. He's funny. Yada, yeah. yada, yada, this and that. And he's, and he's good looking. Because that does matter, right? But it's yeah. not like he's good. It's not like he's good looking. Like, oh, shit. I think that motherfucker fine. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know what I'm saying. I don't know if you know what you're saying. If how can someone be good looking and not fine? You want a guy that's fine for the show that you're executive producing. When you're like when you're yeah, casting you, one of your shows, right? Yeah, and yeah. you want a lead male that gets yeah. all the girls. Yes. You want a guy that you're attracted to, that you would but like you, to suck his dick. But you as a man can't say that. You can't say he's fine. You can't say you, you have, want to suck his dick. I but definitely can't say that. You can't but say you can't. that. But you you gotta be like someone who gets their dick sucked. No, I say he's good looking. And, and you saying that he's good looking has to be based off the fact that you vetted it through all the women that work on the show. Why and you the need women, them to vet it? Why can't you just trust your gut, right? That's gay. That, if I, if I, if I, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That is absolutely gay. If you Trusting your, your gut? Oh, if you have a feeling in your stomach about a nigga, all right, another man. <laughs> if you have a, oh, if you have a feeling in your stomach about another man. Right. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. bro that's, yeah, you yeah. think that's gay? Gay. Gay. Okay. Now what perfectly if, fine. Perfectly fine to be gay. By okay. Way. What is what is a guy that you think is attractive? That I think is attractive? I don't think any guy is attractive. Okay, what is whatever word synonym you want to use for attractive? What is a guy I, that what, what is mean? a guy because, that you think is good looking? Good looking? It depends. Yeah. Why good looking man. Good Name looking. a good looking man. Why am I calling him good looking? Trey Songs. Is Trey Songs good looking? Hey. Um depends for what role. 
No, no. Seriously. The role of role of man in life is Trey Songz good looking. Taylor is is Trey Songz no, no, good looking. No, 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 no. Don't ask Taylor. Just you. If you had to define him as good looking or not. I have no idea. I'm totally <laughs> yeah, you're so the situation. stupid. I'm being honest with you. <laughs> you're so I'm totally, scared. I'm Why are totally, you scared, bro? I'm not scared. I'm just totally Morris neutral Chester. on the situation. Just say to him. Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut is a good looking guy because he looks like me. Exactly. So you just compliment yourself and he does not and? look like you. He doesn't. Well, we look like each other. Nah. Listen, let, let the record show you Morris Chestnut. Like the chestnut Morris. that's been roasting on the open fire. <laughs> hey, some people like their chestnuts well done. Morris <laughs> says. <laughs> Easy who? Jeezy. Me and Jeezy, I, me and Jeezy have been uh, com- confused for each other. <laughs> yeah. Now, true story, true story. Ayan Levanzant at Tyler Perry's um, at, at Tyler Perry Studio Grand Opening. Yeah. Ayan Levanzant confused me for Jeezy that night at the Tyler Perry event. And, and who's Mar- Ayan Levanzant? Who's that? Ayan Le is uh, Fix My Life. Ayan Levanzant, Fix My Life. I don't know who that is. Well, she's richer than both of us. Mm. That's, that's, Fair enough. That's, that's always important. Fair enough. Let's, listen, let's get into some positively brilliant and let's get into some what a fucking idiot, man. Okay. What did you see this week that was positively brilliant? Um, Man, I, I saw a few. Th- I think uh, Kim Jong-un faking his death to find out who the traitors were in his circle was positively brilliant. This guy <laughs> is. Come on, give me this hot take. Nah, not, he faked <laughs> give his me this death. One. He faked his death to find out who the traitors were in his circle. The motherfucker was out there celebrating when he died, right? He was like, ooh, you were celebrating? All right, adios, okay? They never, they never quite announced he died, though. Exactly, but the people who thought that he was dead and then he found out exactly who they were, who was celebrating his demise. He gets them the fuck out of here. The only That's person nice, that bro. Happy, only, only person that looked happy when he died was his sister. So he might have to get his sister out of here, bro. Real talk. So. Anyway, I thought that was positively brilliant. Absolutely genius. You know, you get to find out how people really feel about you when they think you're dead. Fake that death, man. I think we need to fake more deaths. I Explain think it's a great idea. Why... Why was Kim Jong-un on his Tupac Elvis Presley shit? Like, why would people even think... That he would fake his death. Like our, our no, a better question. Nobody. Why when it. people? Why when people thought he was dead when he put out the picture of him cutting the ribbon at whatever he was at? People was trying to figure out if it was doctored. Like CNN did a whole segment on this. Like why? What because is he, he got the world shook, bro. Kim Jong Un is the goat. He got the world shook. He really? got the world on a string. He's playing fucking yo yo with the world. Whatever he does, everybody's why, there for it because the guy's unchained, man. That's fucking. Yeah, dude, it's Asian Django. This guy yeah, does not he, play around. Dude. He does whatever he wants to do. But he can't. He's not a threat to any. He's not a threat to America, at least. You think? Who knows? Now, I don't know. A few years on this podcast, you, you matter of fact, you had me dressed up in a soldier outfit one time doing a sketch about Kim Jong-un because you said his fucking missiles couldn't go anywhere. It was Yo. like he's no threat to America. I don't think he's a threat to America. But you, maybe- actually, called him, you actually called him pussy. Uh, I would never use those words for the great Kim Jong Un, bro. That's a lie. That's I'd a never use those. Lie. Gr- hey, you that's know a what? Lie. You know what? Maybe I got a call from the supreme leader, and he told me not to put that sketch out. Maybe that's what happened. Why though? Tell me what's what's up with Kim Jong Un? Why is he why is he such a threat? Son, what this guy? I don't know if he's a threat. I'll be honest. I I do not know if he's a threat. I have absolutely no clue. That being said, you got to put a little respect on his name, bro. What does he do this bad? What does he do this bad? Chris. Chris don't know. Chris glasses are fogging up right now. What is- <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris, answer the question, Chris. What does Kim Jong Un do? That he bad? has an entire he has an entire country oppressed in in various stages of starvation over the last ten years. For starters, I mean, mad countries starve. Chris, come on, yo. America about to be one of them. That's what I'm saying. You can't get fucking a beef patty at Wendy's. This shit about to be bad. Exactly. By the way, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson been talking about food shortages for years. This Who? is another reason, Dr. Claude Anderson, genius. How many uh, French people do you know, man? Oh, no, Ivana Levac, Dr. Claude uh, Anderson, dude. Come hang out with the regular folks again. Claude, Claude's an OG. He's 85 years old. But um, yeah, it's going to be bad, bro. That's why I've been telling everybody, learn to live off the fucking land, man. And, 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 and wouldn't it be something if like the, the universe is really correcting itself, right? Like the earth is correcting itself. It's mm. healing itself. Wouldn't it be something if all the vegetarians were right? <laughs> and, Why? And 
<laughs> and it ended up being a meat shortage and we all had to eat vegetables and then all of us end up liking it and never go back to meat ever again. Yo, can that be something? But can you explain to me why there's a meat shortage? Like what do cow, cows don't die from coronavirus? Why, what, what's the issue here? What's going on? I think it was something about, uh, and I correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who knows, but from what I was hearing, Mm -hmm. There was a coronavirus outbreak in a factory and the coronavirus workers, I mean, not the coronavirus workers, the meat factory workers wanted to stop working. Right. But Trump signed some executive order to keep them all working, even though they all feel like they shouldn't be working. Let's go. You know, let's go. I guess uh, what they do is not like a job that anybody can do. I guess not a job that you can just get rid of all the meat workers and then put some soldiers in there and they fucking, you know, whatever they do to the meat. I don't goddamn Right. No, so that's what that's 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 what I've been told. Not so you're saying, saying this entire by, time? Oh, 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 by the way, yeah. not saying that I'm correct because I'm tired of y'all in our comments saying we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. This is the brilliant idiots, idiots podcast. We're not here to make sense. All right. Anyway, that was my positively brilliant. What about you? What do you got? <sighs> positively brilliant this week was for me was um, Tory Lanez What here with YouTube. Uh, to help uh, artists monetize their shows from home. Okay. Um, Erica Badu also, even though she she started this a few weeks ago, she she launched her own live screen platform and she charges viewers between a dollar and three dollars rather than using IG Live or YouTube or other you know traditional avenues that everybody is using. And it's so weird to me how we have such a double standard based on what social media tells us, what, based on what social media tells us, right? And this is what I mean by that. Erica Badu started that a few weeks ago, charging a dollar, three dollars. People go watch her, yada, yada, yada. It's br- people stay as brilliant. Tory Lanez, even though he partnered with YouTube, you know, um, you know, he's charging. People say he's brilliant. Teddy Riley, a couple weeks ago, tried to tell people like, look, we can do it on Instagram Live, but let me run it on my own website as well. Why can't we have our own platform? And because people were saying, nah, Teddy fucking up the fun, or nah, you know, Teddy fucking up the verses, nah, Teddy shouldn't be charging this and that, which he never said he was gonna charge. He just said, yo, let's get it, bring it to my platform. People were killing him for it. Mm-hmm. But when, when, when it's presented a different way, and the way Tori and Eric are doing it, people are like, yo, oh, well, that's, that's the way for artists to make money while they're stuck in quarantine. You know, artists don't know when they're gonna be able to get back on the road and do shows, but that's the way for them to, you know, monetize their shows from home. I think it's brilliant, you know? Um, I don't know if I would necessarily pay to see somebody perform, but I do know if it was like, I would have definitely paid for some of the verses. Hmm. I would have definitely paid for some of those. I would definitely pay for Jill Scott and Erica Badu this weekend. I would definitely have paid for Teddy Riley and Babyface. What was I what was Tori doing on YouTube? Performing. So he was doing a live show? Doing a live show on stage. To nobody? Performing. No crowd. No crowd. How was it? I'm curious. I mean, it looked okay. But listen, you got to think, right? We're the audience. We're just not there in the venue. Right. But there, so, is, <laughs> there is value to that audience interaction. Maybe less so in music, but you need it with stand-up. Um, like, I w- if, if I was a stand-up comedian and I was doing that, I would do what Bishop T.D. Jakes is doing right now. Which is? Bishop T.D. Jakes preaches to an empty church, but it's literally like maybe three people. Like I watch, you know, I watch him every Sunday, but this Sunday, just since it's top of the mind, um, I saw his wife was there and it was like one other person there. All you really need is two people. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, what Bishop T.D. Jake said is cool. Bishop T.D. Jake said, I never needed a crowd to, to get to work myself up. Right. Because there's no uh, reaction that is necessary to what he's saying. Shit. Better come with me to a black church. Are you crazy? Right. But you don't need go. Go on, yeah. child. Yes, you Amen, do. Amen, child. Yes, you do. You <laughs> Preach. Need, you need. You Tabernacle. need people. In, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, but you don't you need, need yes. that. You don't yeah, you need do. that. You well, need TD it, Jakes just proved you don't, right? It's not like he's got well, well, somebody he got working people. a buzzer that they press a button and you hear some old lady go, come on, child. Well, you got a few people there. It's just like you, right? You're a comedian. All you need is one person to laugh. Well, and you and you off to the races. We've been doing, <laughs> we've been doing the like the weekly uh, thing. I don't even have a name for it right now. I need to get a name for it. But um, the thing basically you reposted. We've been doing every single week where we basically oh, take shit. a topic. You got Positively some smoke brilliant. for that, bro. I admire you, bro. Up. You I sat in the fuck. fire, man. I admire you, bro. Listen, I love that. You I sat in the I, fire for that one. 
I've, I've taken heat for worse. I know. <laughs> you think I give a fuck about that shit? Like, motherfuckers really mad at me for how I feel about a presidential candidate? Mm. God damn. I ain't I, am I not an American? Yeah. Do I not have the right to vote for who I want to vote for and decide who I want to vote for yeah. based off what interests they are presenting? Yeah. And you mad at me because Andrew gave an endorsement of the motherfucker? Mm -hmm. Just because the endorsement didn't come in the way that you wanted to hear. Mm. Right? Yeah. You start you started it off by saying he'd be a great a great president and you listed your reasons why. Mm -hmm. I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. Thank you, what man. The fuck. What the fuck? I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was fucking smart. How you mad at me? Because I posted some shit that my guy who's a comedian created and it was good. Thank what you. What the fuck? Take that shit to Joe Rogan's page. Joe posted it. Yeah, they were loving it over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Two different worlds, right? All fuckers is like, oh. One motherfucker told me, see, shit like this is going to help Donald Trump get reelected. I gave Donald Trump donkey of the day today. Donald Trump has his own donkey of the day intro. I post all kind of wild ass <sighs> Donald Trump memes and shit making jokes about Donald Trump. Yeah. So the one time the, the Democratic candidate gets some smoke, and which wasn't the first time. I posted shit about Joe Biden before. For the sure. one time he gets some smoke, y'all motherfuckers mad at me. And now uh, I'm the one that's going to help get Donald Trump reelected. Well, how about this? Since I've given Donald Trump donkey of the day so much and spoken out against him, if Joe Biden gets elected in November, do I get credit for Joe Biden getting yeah. elected? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? And I'll be honest, we flamed Trump in that thing too, but nobody paid attention I, I, to so? it. We flamed Trump in You it. were comparing the two. You were showing why they're so much alike, but actually Joe Biden just does what Trump does better. Exactly. But it's the same shit, like, stupid. I know, but the thing is they just, at least the way that we've been thinking about things is like, the way I go into any joke, right, is I, I don't think any joke should have a political party attached to it. I think you just do the joke based on what your gut tells you. And sometimes your gut tells you it's liberal. Sometimes it says it's conservative. Sometimes it says reasonable right in the middle. But I never decide the political party of a joke before I go about it because I don't think you get that real thing that people connect to. And the cool thing about the piece was that it connected to people on all sides of the political spectrum because it connects to who you are as a person, not this political idea of who you are. You yeah, know, it's, it's, I, I totally understand. It's like even like I, I'll put this under positively brilliant. Don Lemon, not not his comments per se, but somebody took his comments I, about put Donald the ether Trump shit? and put him under ether with mm -hmm. the pigeon from the fucking Stillmatic album yep. and the hat cocked to the side from the Stillmatic album. And so I put in the caption, the Don. Why? Because Nas always calls himself The Don. Yeah. Nas has a song called The Don. To me, I like smart shit that connects so many different dots. Yeah. That's it. It was well done. Give, it, it was, was well, good. I, I don't give a fuck what really Don Lemon was saying. Yeah. If I did, I would have posted that before they had to eat the shit to it. Also, he you didn't know? say anything. Nah, it was common sense. It was stating the obvious. I didn't get, I didn't, I, didn't, I honestly didn't understand what the hype was about it. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't. Like but it was a fight. fun piece. It was like a, it was like a cool meme, a funny meme. A meme can be funny regardless of political affiliation or having no political affiliation at all. And I know That's as it. we approach the election, people get riled up and they get so caught up in the emotions of these things. But if you are creating comedy content, you cannot be saddled to one side because then you give away the most valuable asset you have as a comedian, which is the element of surprise, right? If Ooh. I know how you're going to go with every single piece of content you put out there, yeah, there's no yeah, surprise. Yeah, yeah. You cannot be funny anymore. The biggest why, knock on um, SNL is we know where you're going to go with every single take. And the times yeah. that they catch us off guard, we're like, yo, that shit was fire. We didn't see yeah. that coming. That's why we get, you know, that's why so many of these talk show hosts nowadays, it's like, eh, I know what your angle gonna be. Every you know time, what I'm bro. Every, like, I, I like, I need, we know, we know people on Fox gonna go all the way to the right. We know people on MSNBC, CNN, or, mm -hmm. you know, these late shows, they gonna go to the left. Who the fuck is in the gray area? Yo, you know the crazy thing, bro? Most people are in the gray area. Most people in the gray area. If you're being objective. No, no. If, I don't know shows. I don't think people, I, I think it's hard for people to be objective. Oh, bro. oh okay. Let me, let me back that statement up. I think most people, their internal monologue, who they are when they're by themselves is, I hate the word moderate because I don't feel like I'm moderate. I don't think you're moderate. I think we're reasonable. The word moderate sucks. But like, mm, I think most I like people that. are in that gray area, right? They're in the middle, right? And then one or two issues pulls them to one side. But most people are operating right here. Some people yeah. go, you know what? I really care about uh, uh, the black 
uh, experience here in America, and I'm going to vote for the person that is offering the best possible solution to all the black problems that exist right now. If that's on the right, if that's on the left, boom, I'm voting for that person, right? Yeah. Jewish people might do the exact same thing. Uh, some person might really feel strongly about abortion, and they go, you know what? I don't believe in abortion, and I'm going to vote Republican because they tend to not believe in uh, having abortion be, being legal. And But realistically, all my other shit is kind of liberal. But it's a single yeah, issue yeah, that pulls yeah. us aside. So the, when the rest of the time when we're just having conversations, it's mostly gray. Most people are in the gray. I like I like the word reasonable over moderate. Yeah, um, I, like I, lo- I love I love the fact that to be reasonable is in the gray area. I love the fact that you know um, I like I like to have I like to leave reasonable doubt for things. You know what I'm saying? And you know what else was bl- black and white, or was actually gray? The Reasonable Doubt album cover by Jay-Z. Oh, so I see what you did there, bro. So to, me, to me, it all makes perfect sense. You know I what I mean? See I see that. I, I want to say, you know who else I think is positively brilliant? Go. Um, I think I think what Diddy did last week is positively brilliant. I think him um saying that the black vote ain't free and, you know, him saying that, you know, uh, somebody has to come with a real black agenda and him saying that he's going to hold the vote hostage. Uh, I think we talked about this. Last yeah, you week, said that right? last week, I think. Yeah. Okay. But well, the reason I'm saying I'm giving him positively brilliant now is because on Monday, Joe Biden released a black agenda called the Lift Every Voice <laughs> Black Agenda, which is named after the Black Negro spiritual mm-hmm. anthem. Lift right? Every Voice. You know, a lot Lift of white that- people are like, aren't they loud enough? <laughs> good. Well, good. Being loud is what is what caused Joe Biden to put that motherfucking agenda out there. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. And I like- I like the fact that Simone Sanders said, um, you know, this uh, this agenda is, I think, I don't know if she said it or Biden said it, but they said that it's a, a living agenda, meaning that, you know, it, it can it's still room for negotiation. Like it's still things to be added to it. You know what I mean? And I listen, as I told y'all, there is nothing irresponsible about demanding something for your vote. And now Joe Biden put something on the table and, you know, it's up for review. You know, it's, it's I, I have thoughts on it. You know, it's things that I like in it. It's things that I don't like in it. You know, my initial thoughts are it's more the same old, same old, you know, especially the same old, same old we hear from established Democrats, establishment Democrats. You right. Know what I'm saying like 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 they write these proposals and they identify the problem using the word African-American or right. black. And then they start talking these arising tide lift all boats policies. You know what I mean? That's what they should have called it. They, should, they actually should have called the policy uh, lift every boat. Or lift every slave ship. Lift every slave ship would have been good. Lift every slave ship. Lift every slave ship would have been good. A rising just, tide lifts all boats. Yeah, I mean that's when they hit you. Which which Joe? Which was always Joe Biden's thing. Joe Biden used to always say that. You know. Yo, you know, you know what y'all got to do next time somebody next time one of these white politicians goes. Listen, we have to rise the tide. You got to be like, listen, we not that good at swimming. Okay, can oh, we no, keep the they, tide low? They don't say it like that. What they say is they they'll say things like an American agenda is a black agenda which we know just isn't the case. That's not reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the trickle down economics thing. That shit is not coming to the hood. Never has, never will. It. I understand what you're saying. There are other people that are going to get it first. Obviously, Absolutely. there there is a trickle down effect by being in America. Like, being black in America is better than being um, fucking, I don't know, black in war-torn Congo, right? So there is a trickle down effect to being in America. The problem is is that historically black people have been on the bottom of that trickle. So there's all these other groups that are getting that way before. So it's like, how do you, how do you redistribute the trickle? If you have created, let's not act like what happened to black people in America wasn't intentional. Let's not act like it wasn't by design. So if you had, if you had systemic things that were done intentionally to to put people in those conditions, you got to do systemic things to get them out. It's really just that simple. That's why even with like Joe Biden's, uh, Black agenda, like the criminal justice reform is weak, especially for somebody who wrote the 94 crime bill. Like you, you got to atone for that 94 crime bill by coming with a better, you know, criminal justice agenda. And the economic, the economic plan is cool, but it's cool for black people who already got a little money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you say you want to advance the economic mobility of black people and close the racial, you know, wealth and income gap by investing in black workers, businesses and communities, that's great. Like you say, you wanna expand black home ownership and wealth building, great, but you also have to remember you can't small business home ownership your way out of poverty because most people don't have the capital to get started. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So like those, that shit works for me. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could take advantage of that shit, but the everyday person working in the hood, they can't. You know? it's now, just like of your staff, how many people are are black? My staff? Yeah. Everybody except for two. So you could depends what you call what do you call staff? Like you could be my my personal employees. Yeah, like, just right, like my team. people who your team. I mean, from what I've seen, you have a lot of black people on your team. Yeah. Right. So maybe helping a guy like you actually does create a trickle down effect directly to your community. Nobody else is <laughs> siphoning off that trickle because it's like, okay, boom, I'm going to help this small business that Charlemagne's going to going to open, and you know he's going to open it in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, where. He's actually going to end up employing 80% black people and then those black people now have jobs and they can potentially start their own businesses. So maybe this this like maybe this infusion in capital in the business savvy people of a community is actually the best thing you could do to a community instead of just giving everybody in the community the stimulus check and they don't really know how to reinvest that in a way that's going to help them for future generations. Like what I would do now, is I would give money to the people that know what they're fucking doing. Um, I would do that. I think that's one way. I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? I, I said, I'm, I'm going to stop. Cause, I'm gonna stop cause you're living, I'm gonna... you're living, you're living proof of the actions, right? It's like you, if, if the government basically said, yo, Charlamagne, you don't got to pay taxes this year, but you know what you got to do with that money is start another business. By osmosis, you're gonna hire black people because that's who's around you. Yeah, but you know, it's, it still won't be enough, though. You know, what I'm saying a, like I would. I, it's a start. It's a push, it's right? A, but I mean, that's. But by the way, that's happening. If 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 guys like me do what they're supposed to do and take advantage of these, you know, small business initiatives and stuff like that, that's already happening. But right. I'm talking about those people on the ground, right? Like like Mayor Bloomberg had something in his Greenwood initiative where he wanted to put seventy billion dollars. And, and, and the most poor and disenfranchised hoods across America, like right. the top 10 most poor and disenfranchised hoods, right? Like to me, I like stuff like that. I'm gonna stop putting a dollar amount on those type of things right. only because I don't wanna, you know, uh, un uh, undercut us. But yes, there should be billions of dollars invested in hoods all across America. Like it should go to improving public schools. It should go to improving hospitals. It should go to uh, improving housing because we all know environment, you know, a, a good environment automatically improves the kid's mental and, and emotional health. Like it should go to, you know, good health care. You know what I'm saying? So it let should me go to uh, after school programs, like free trade school in the hood. You know what I mean? Let people learn how to do things with their hands. So now these kids, not only can they go make a living, they can rebuild their fucking neighborhoods because you got electricians over here and air conditions, over, air conditioned people over here and car carpenters over here. Like it's a right. lot of different ways. So let me throw something. Let me throw grow. something by you. Right. We've okay. heard of these programs that have been put in these poor communities and to hopefully uplift these poor communities. It's not the first time the money has been put into the hood. Right. Um, yeah, it depends. I mean, we could look at Barack Obama had certain programs and like plenty of other presidents have had certain programs and mayors and governors have had programs to uplift poor communities, not just black communities, but just poor communities in general. Right. Mm -hmm. In black communities, and I'm sure it's the same as in Russian communities and other kind of a uh, new other other poor maybe communities where there's like new immigrants, et cetera. I'm sure there are people who are like leading industry within the poor community. Right. And who are trying to rebuild that community. Like there's a guy in Houston. What's his name? Absolutely. Slim Trey. Thug, is that it? I mean, it's a lot of them doing that in Houston. You got Slim Thug. Trade the Truth. Trade the Truth. You got guys like Jay Prince, like all those brothers in Houston so like, reinvesting. And those are just the entertainers. I, I'm, 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 it's, no, no, I get that, yeah, So I'm just, that I'm, I'm just going the off the entertainers because that's what I know, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if I got money, I could give it to the government, right? Who's maybe, if I have government money, I could give it to government officials who are maybe not the most uh, efficient with their spending, right? Because oftentimes you don't have the best businessmen or most intelligent people in those government positions because you can't profit that much. Or I could go to someone who's already functioning super well within that community and already has a profitable business within that community and I could give them an influx of cash and I could go, what What would you do with this money? How can we support you? And you, hey, use this money to actually have a profitable business that you're going to then hire people and you're going to help grow. Like to me, I'm going, what is Nipsey Hussle doing in his community? All right, let's invest in Nipsey. Let's invest in the guys that are already in those communities who understand how those communities function. Not some white stiff who's on fucking Capitol Hill and then is going to go to Compton and know exactly what Compton needs as far as a business. 
Nah, go to the community, ask them what they need, what's going to work, what's going to function. And those not, businesses I'm, will be supported because the community I'm, already supports those people. I'm not mad at any of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's like a good example of that is in Joe Biden's black agenda. He has uh, this proposal for like a nine hundred million dollar over eight year grant program to fight gun violence. Right. OK. I don't even know what the fuck that means. All right. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, how does that reduce gun violence? I would rather figure out ways to directly put that money in the hands of the people, create opportunities for them. That's how you reduce gun violence. You reduce gun violence by reducing poverty fucking tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? That's how you reduce gun violence. So give these kids an opportunity to do something positive with themselves. Like, that's why I said invest the money in the schools, man. Invest the money into aftercare programs. Invest the money in the free trade school. Invest the money in just the environment. Motherfucking fix the fucking projects up. You know what I'm saying? Make these people's places that they live in look fucking decent so their mind state starts to change. If you put a fucking human being in a shitty condition, his mind is going to be shitty. He's going to feel like a fucking animal or she's going to feel like a fucking animal or a savage. She's going to feel downtrodden. She's going to feel like fuck his shit. Uh, we just out here. You know what I mean? Like this is we we it's garbage all around us. So shit, that's life. That's all they know. Like, no, man, give people something to fucking inspire to. bro. Like, yeah, um, I like that, I, man. I like the idea of like fixing the community, but I like the idea of hiring people within the community to fix the community. Right. It's like I, I agree. With, I agree with that. The only problem I have with that, and it's not even a problem. I just think that like. Like promising black folks that they will rise via black capitalism through small businesses, through education, through home ownership. That isn't everybody's reality. By the way, that's nobody's reality in America, black or white. Like the U.S. is not driven through small business economy. And we exaggerate the return on investment uh, when it comes to education. Okay, and home I disagree ownership with you on that. I'll push back on education? education. Yeah, I think it's the fastest really? way. I think it's the fastest way to um, is the fastest way for class mobility. Meaning, is the fastest way to go from let's say middle class to upper middle class or lower class to middle class. The fastest way that you could possibly do that, and you can do it within one generation, is by education. So you telling me that all of these kids that have degrees out here right now mm -hmm. that can't find a job. They have to continue their education. Don't get a degree. I think, I, I, don't get I, I a degree in poetry. Don't get a degree okay, in literature. Get that, a degree in engineering. Okay. You will have a job okay, and you will up right. your status. That's the thing that people thought yeah. is like, they think they just go to college and they study history and all of a sudden they're going to have a real job. And no bullshit. If you do study history, you could get a job teaching. You could get a real job. I don't know if it's yeah. going to uh, increase your, your class, but you can choose when you go get your education to study engineering and you will have a job when you come out of college without a doubt. I think that's what we have to start saying and, and when we talk about education. Speak on it. It's about it's about what you major in. Now, mind you, I didn't go to college and so don't listen to fucking me. This is pure brilliant idiot logic. You majored saying, like, you majored in radio. And now what happened? I did. I did. You're right. But but like uh if you're gonna be a doctor, you know, something in the medical field, you're gonna make some money, you're gonna get a job. All right, you do something in engineering, you're going to make some money, you're going to get a job. If you become an attorney, you're probably going to make some money, you're going to get a job. Like stuff like that. Bro, literally your counselor, because I know we live in like this individualistic society where we tell kids like, do whatever makes you feel good. And I do believe that if you have the opportunity to do whatever makes you feel good. But your college counselor should tell you, hey, these are the jobs that America thinks they're going to need in four years. They're in these fields and these are the schools that have yeah, openings yeah, in these yeah, fields that fit yeah, the grades that you yeah. have. Do you want yeah. a guaranteed job making 60 grand a year the second you get out of college or 80 grand a year, whatever some engineers make? Do you want that? Yes, I'd like yeah. that. That's what you study. You're out of poverty. Because right now you would you would be pushing kids toward the tech world, right? hundred like, percent. That's, that's what, what you did, Al. That's, that's what Al did. What Al do? Al did every fucking job. He's like Forrest Gump, but he was a nurse. He did psych. Well, you did psychology, psychology, and then there was one other thing. Oh, he, he became a cop. You was a cop, Alex? Yeah, bro. Alex, we need you back on the police force, especially in New York City. You see how these fuck? Yeah, how you, you you got fucking uh, Garcias beating the shit out of people. What's a Garcia? That Mexican, the Spanish, Puerto Rican? What the fuck is a Garcia? What is Fernando? Fernando Garcia? What is that? That sounds Mexican. That shit could That's be not, Filipino. You don't claim him. <laughs> I don't claim him. But nah, I, I get what you said. I, I don't. I don't. I don't want us to uh, even home ownership. Like that's not the only path to wealth either. You know what I'm saying? Totally like, true. That's not the only path to wealth. So it's solid for people who already have a little something, but you know what? You know what home ownership is good for? It's good Talk for guys me. like 
me and you that, and don't let me speak on your behalf, but you and I, I assume, don't really understand the financial markets, right? To the point where we're willing to dump hundreds of thousands of dollars in there, right? Oh, that's why I got a financial guy. Now you have a financial guy. But like a guy like me and you who understands our craft and has disposal income because of our craft, we also understand the concept of if I buy that home, it's going to probably increase in value over the next 10, 20 years. And I'm already paying rent anyway, so I might as well pay a mortgage. That's simple enough for us. Simple. Whether we're and, gonna, even, and even if it doesn't increase in value, I'm, I'm going to get my money back. Yeah, I'll get my money back or something. That's it. Yeah. It's, and at the least, I got a house. That's it. I'm going to have yeah. to pay rent regardless. I might as well pay a mortgage and then I get to own it after. Boom, I'm good. It's That's the right. simplest form of investment. Now, yeah. if you, I, I honestly, I'm ignorant when it comes to uh, investing in the stock market. I don't know what a fucking Vanguard account is, a VTX this, a that, a Berkshire Hathaway. I don't really know that much. So if someone's telling me, hey, Schultz, give me $100,000 and I'll put it in the market. I'm skeptical of that. I'm like, what is that? What does that mean you're going to put it in the market? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I did that uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and I, I check it every night. I don't know why. Cause you're paranoid, B. You're like, yo, they running away with it. <laughs> well, I did, I did, I did an S and P 500, so it's like a, a very diversified portfolio. So right. it's like investments in a lot of different things. But for me, it's like my guy told me to look at that and walk away, bro. Yep. That's 15 years, 30 years down the line. Don't even worry about it. Son, why, the f why am I going on to look at it every night? I don't fuck. Cause you don't trust that shit, fam. It's like, look, hey, listen, give me your money and walk away. Isn't that every robbery? <laughs> That's literally the beginning and end of every robbery. Give me your money. Now walk away. Okay. You walk, walk away. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But I will say past couple of weeks, that shit went up. Right. I was like, oh shit. You, you probably did the right thing. They, I think they're. I think some people say that the most money is going to be made. The, mo the biggest transfer of wealth always happens during economic crisis. Everything. And it's sad. That's, that's fucked. But once again, that's fucked up. I sent Chris this article. I meant to send it to you, too. It was this article about this woman. I forgot where she's from, but she has been, been predicting shit like this for years. Like she yeah. predicted. The, and she's not like a psychic. She's something else. But she predicted like the coronavirus and this and that. Right. And she said what's going to come next is one of the things is a lot of people who are already rich are going to come out this come out of this situation even richer. Yes. Right? But that gap between the haves and the have-nots is going to be even wider. Yep. And even worse. Yep. And that's when the civil unrest is going to motherfucking start. Yep. That's just, I, I, I can see that coming a mile a fucking way. Like, a lot of that shit is just, like, common sense, but you can just see it coming a mile away, man. I just, yep. listen, I, like I said, uh, Biden's economic plan isn't bad, but it's, 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 it's not for people who, who, who don't have. It's for people who have, you know, a little bit of something that can afford to invest in those type of things. Because, like, for me, like, when it comes, like, even with home ownership, like, you know, I got to see, you know, um, you know, you got you got to provide down payment assistance. Yep. You, gotta, you, you need capital, black folks, bro. Yeah, you got to get black folks banked and recognized by credit scoring companies. You got to enforce fair lending laws. Like, you got to reduce foreclosures and evictions for motherfuckers that's fucked up now. Like, and, yep. and you got to increase the supply of affordable housing. How about that? Like, I love what Queen Latifah is doing in Newark. Queen Latifah is building like <clears throat> 14 affordable houses in Newark. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, that's the type of shit you have to do if you really are trying to help, you know, people come up in the world. And I still, I believe in like a universal basic income, but I was talking to a, a brother who doesn't believe in universal basic income. And he had another, um, another way to get that kind of money to, to, to people which I thought was smart and I'm too dumb to repeat. You believe in universal basic income? I believe that if we can have, you know, $1.8 trillion stimulus packages or whatever the fuck it is. Right. Yes, I do believe that you can give people a little, little hands up. I definitely believe that. Well, that's different. So universal basic income is different than giving people a hand up. Universal basic income is like $1,000 every month for every American citizen. Right. So you're not really giving people a hand up if everybody gets it because now everybody's hand is at the same height again. Well, as long as you as long as there's no inflation. Well, if you don't if you don't if you don't if you don't change anything in the economy, like like in the market, like right. if you don't change anything in the market and you keep everything the way that it is. Right. You give everybody a thousand dollars. That's that's going to get the economy booming. If you get everybody a thousand dollars a month disposable income. Yeah, but what usually will happen is um, 
the, I guess the way economies work from what I've been reading about it is uh, inflation happens when there's too much money and not enough things to buy. And by increasing the amount of money without increasing the amount of things to buy, money could start to become less valuable. Right. So like if you look at like the fall of empires, usually the fall of empires happens when one, they're in nonstop wars, which is kind of what we're going through. And two, when they start inflating their own money, just printing money to pay for those wars. So the universal basic income thing, it sounds good. But in reality, I don't think it works, man. I think you just people end up being in the same place that they were. It's like, oh, now everybody has another thousand dollars. OK, well, rent ends up being a thousand dollars more. Now we're all back to even. I will say this though, this is America. In America, there will never, there's an endless supply of useless shit to buy, bro. Yeah, fair enough. Like, fucking, like, fair like, enough. Like, this, is, this is the country that sold the Chia pack. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? Why the yeah. fuck would we ever buy a goddamn Chia pack? This yeah. is the country that bought, remember them little sea monkeys you could buy and put in the water? Yeah. And they would turn like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, whatever. All, long story short, I give Diddy uh, props. Because Diddy, uh, magno he he put a microphone to a conversation that's been going on for the past year and some change. And look, man, if motherfuckers want to play ball, they got to play ball. It's Yo, all about negotiating, baby. And you know what? Maybe it's important that like people connect those two things. Because I think it's too easy to go, ah, fuck Diddy for saying that, fuck him. And then a couple weeks later, you actually have a black agenda from Biden. Le and you Less forget, than a week. Oh, yeah, a week later, you have a black less agenda from Biden. Week. And then people might just forget that what Diddy said or what you were saying, what other people were saying inspired it. If you connect both of those things, then maybe people will start to speak out more because they're like, oh, shit, when I speak out, I'm heard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Listen, man. Charlemagne the God. I want y'all to write this down. Yeah. Okay. You get what you demand, you encourage what you tolerate. Uh. Simple as that. You uh. get what you demand, you encourage what you tolerate. If you don't say shit, you're going to keep getting exactly what the fuck you've been getting all of these years, right. which is shit. Because clearly you're tolerating it. You know what I mean? When you right. tell a motherfucker to back up off you, or there might be some consequences and repercussions, then a motherfucker probably going to back up off you. Right. At, le at least enough to see if you really bought that shit you kick it. And then when he realized you ain't about that shit, you kick it, he gonna hit you with that shit Mike Tyson was doing on, on goddamn Instagram Live <laughs> this fucking week, all right? Mike said he wanna come back, bro. I know, he's bored, huh? Man, Mike said he gonna, Mike said he about to get in the ring and do three and four rounds uh, for charity. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. Yeah, but who wants that smoke, bro? I'm not getting in the ring with that. Nah, I wouldn't fight Mike Tyson. Nah, 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 nah. He got that old man strength now, too. Ugh. Mike Tyson will knock you the fuck out, man. You know what's so interesting? What's that? I um I was sitting back thinking about this, right? And I guess we can go into the, the, the deep dive. Well, what about what a fucking idiot? Oh, what a fucking idiot. Damn, we didn't do no... It had to be some stupid motherfuckers this week, right? Who was stupid this week? Yo, you know who's kind of stupid? Talk to me. Isaiah Thomas, bro. <laughs> Why is Zeke stupid? Because he just don't know that nobody likes him. I wouldn't be mad at that if I was like... Yo, Zeke is an alpha male, bro. Hey... All respect to Zeke. Alpha male. I don't give a fuck how many times he kissed Magic Johnson in the mouth. Alpha fucking male. Uh, you gotta be an alpha male to go kiss a motherfucker with AIDS and be like, I ain't getting it. Whoa, whoa, whoa Come on, whoa, bro. Whoa. That's an alpha move. Jesus Christ. That's an alpha God move. Damn. That's not an alpha move. Yeah, it's like, yo, nobody could beat me, not even AIDS. And then you go First smooch all, a dude who got it. Isaiah was kissing Magic before Magic got diagnosed with AIDS. That's number one. Number two, clearly. Americans ain't scared of no goddamn viruses. All right, this country is reopening. <laughs> We've at been the height of a pandemic. I think I give a fuck. Please. Nah, but why like you, it just. Why you think Magic out. Johnson been on CNN all week? Let's say again. Why you think Magic been on CNN for the past two weeks? He has. Magic be on everybody's show, and I'm just sitting there like Magic is the symbol of why we ain't afraid of no goddamn virus. <laughs> that's what Magic represents. Salute to Magic Johnson. Every that's time right. I see Magic on CNN, I beat my chest like that's right. Open up America, goddamn it. Let's go. Let's fucking go, all right? <laughs> I'm out here being pussy. Imagine been living with this shit for 30 fucking years. Let's fucking go. <laughs> right. He's on there with no fucking gloves, no uh, no mask, no nothing. No gloves. No, no protection. Nothing. Still Ain't no that, protection. That's, that's still no protection. <laughs> <laughs> still no protection. Magic the goat. <laughs> Why you don't like Zeke? 
I didn't say I don't like them. I actually okay, okay. like people who irritate uh, others and aren't wildly liked by everybody. I relate Me to too. it. Me now, too. That's a, that's a, it's a problem I have. Now, that being said, he seems to be unaware of the fact uh, or unaware why he was left off that team. But from everybody else, it seems like he wasn't the only uh, Jordan wasn't the only person that didn't like him. Jordan didn't yeah, like him. Yeah, yeah. Pippen didn't yeah. like him. Right, uh, All right Larry, few, Larry Bird. Larry didn't like Larry him. Larry Bird didn't like him. Um, they said Magic, but I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. I think so, him and Magic might have had some issues. So and they, you know, they had a, but they loved each other. I don't think they that, said Magic in the doc though. Now here's the thing that nobody talks talks about, but I think it's really interesting. Who coached that team? Chuck Daly. Who? No, no, no. Yup, you right. Chuck Daly. No, 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 no. Yep. Mike Mike Krzyzewski, Mike Krzyzewski was the original Dream Team. Chuck Daly was. I don't know. Nah. No, really? it was it was Chuck Daly who coached that team. So Chuck Daly and Chris, you can speak up if I'm wrong, but Chuck Daly coached that team, right? Chris, I, think, I know. He, I think he was either Dream correct, Team One, correct. or Dream Team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Chuck Daly coached that team. Chuck Daly was it's coach. If if he was really truly wanted on that team, his coach that led him to two championships would have fought for him, and he did not. I don't yeah, even know Chuck, if Chuck yeah. Daly liked it. Yeah, but Chuck Daly didn't have no power over Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. Of course, Larry Bird, of course, but he could Pippen. offer. He could offer. And Not it really. seemed like that wasn't even made. Like Rod Thorne, I think it's Rod Thorne who's getting interviewed the whole time, never said, yo, Chuck Daly came to me and he fought for IT, but I had to say no. Right? Like, yeah. it seemed like it was known that Isaiah was on the team because Isaiah wasn't liked and Isaiah was going to fuck up the vibe. Just don't be, listen, I, I agree with you, you know, but I, I tell people this all the time. If you are one of those people, you know, who I, I'm sure me and Andrew definitely are, who we know people don't like us for whatever reason. Yep. Don't act delusional. Don't act fucking delusional about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't sit here. I, I hate people like that. I hate people who do things, have said things, and then when... People push back on them and don't want them around. They They're act like, like huh? well, why? What? Why? Huh? Why? Huh? why? Why are you acting like me? that with me? What's the problem? Me? Like, motherfucker, you know exactly why. Like, stop it. Stop it. But I fuck with Zeke, though. Zeke is an alpha male. I heard Zeke got them hands, too, boy. Oh, yeah? He can fight? Man, I heard Zeke will put them fucking paws Talk on Talk to bro. me. That's what I heard. I, 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 heard my, I was reading my man Artemis Gordon's Instagram, who I love Artemis Gordon. If you don't follow Artemis Gordon, I have no idea who Artemis Gordon is. He don't put no pictures up of himself. He has no picture of himself, but he be having these great old school stories. Like it's like he knows every fucking thing. He so just, I, I love that part of the doc where Zeke goes, they never said none of this to my face. Like he called Jordan and the Bulls pussy. He basically he was like, yo, Michael yeah. Jordan's a pussy. Scottie Pippen's a pussy. They don't talk that same shit when they're around me. But that's what he said. They said Ooh. like Isaiah, they said Isaiah always stood up for himself. They say Isaiah fought for a lot of causes behind the scene that people didn't know about. Like he was getting his activism on. Okay. They said the, they said the league never wanted him to be a face of the league because they couldn't control him. Ah. Uh. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't one of those good old. Because you got to think about it. The league was supposed to go bird, magic, Jordan. Yep. The Pistons jumped in and disrupted that shit for a couple of seasons. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and they said that when, when Isaiah was the type of person that would step to you. And if you said some shit, he want to know what the fuck is going on because he had them goddamn hands. Isaiah from Chicago. Let's not get it fucked That's up. That's true. Like the South Side or some shit like That's that. That's true. Like, Isaiah, Isaiah ain't pussy by no means. Hmm. So, I love, I, you know, the documentary is not finished yet. What? It's not finished. They uh. just finished. They just, they just finished episode nine and um, they putting the finishing touches on episode 10. Oh, you broke they had, my heart, remember, man. I thought they're going to add more episodes. I thought it's not going to be just 10. I thought it was going to be like 12. Oh, no, no, no. They had to move it up. I mean, it's it's about to get good. We're about to go on what? Episode seven and eight? Yeah. I um, I'm intrigued, man. And, and I, did, I never thought about this. And this is how this is how we, you realize we're mere mortals. OK. Right. And, and And like how you can't you know, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. In this case, you can't put yourself in somebody else's Jordans. You look at Michael Jordan and you say to yourself, why would he ever walk away? Why would he ever walk away? If you watch that fucking documentary this week, you get it, huh? You realize how exhausted yeah. it is to be him. How much of a lonely life it is to be him. There was no other Michael Jordan. 
Nobody else could relate to what the fuck Michael Jordan was going through when he was sitting in his hotel smoking that cigar and just wanting to relax. Do you understand how peaceful that was to Michael? Because from the time Michael stepped out of his hotel, he was bombarded, flooded all the fucking time. And when they started picking him apart in the media, there was a very poignant line in that documentary. Somebody said it. They said that Magic said it. They said that. Oh, man, I can't remember. It was the news anchor. I can't remember the news anchor's name right now, but the, the, the not a, Ahmad Mashad, Mashad. It wasn't Ahmad Rashad. It was the other black brother. It wasn't Ahmad Rashad, the other brother. But he said, <laughs> Yo, sorry, I, I'm sorry. Did you see the meme of Ahmad Rashad going on about his groomsmen for his wedding? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Ahmad had a point, though. OJ Simpson and, and Bill, Bill Cosby. Cosby. Said. OJ, Ahmad had a point, though. I saw Ahmad tweet. Ahmad was real with what he said. Somebody said, Yo, Ahmad, Ahmad said, because the guy said some, t- something to the effect like, Wow. Uh, Omar Rashad had the most problematic groomsmen of all time. Uh, shit, Omar goes, come on, they, were they really problematic in the 80s? Did y'all really think that? Yeah. At the time, they were, those are the bells of the fucking ball. At the time, Omar Rashad was the fucking man yeah. to have OJ Simpson and Bill Cosby in his fucking wedding. Yeah. Stop, stop, knock it off. But Magic Johnson said... Uh, was Ahmad not- Sports Arsenio? Nah. I mean, it seemed like he had this relationship with the players that was different than most of these other like uh, sports journalists. And that like Jordan just calls him and, so, and he's like, hey, I want to talk to you. Let's do an interview. Uh, black privilege. He was like the only black guy. That's on, what I'm and, saying. Was he Arsenio? Was, Did Arsenio? He was an ex-athlete. He was a all oh, he played football. Oh, the Raiders. Oh, okay. The they Raiders. saw him as an athlete. Okay, okay. So there was this like uh, camaraderie uh, as someone yeah, who had that experience. Him. Yeah, he used to play for the Raiders. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and, and and not only that, but he was the only black person in that position at the time on NBC. Like, yeah, he was high profile it. like that. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but go uh, on. One you the, said Magic one of the, Johnson. One of the, yeah, one of the sports anchors said that Magic Johnson said, "If y'all don't lay off this man." Speaking of Michael Jordan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to walk away from this game. Yeah. Because it was too much for him. So now think about it. You're already at your breaking point. You're already saying to yourself, man, I think I'm going to walk away from this shit. And then, sadly, your father gets killed. Mm. Like emotionally, mentally. And, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to get to that in the next two episodes. But emotionally and mentally, he had to be over it. Bro. Mm. Over it. Motherfuckers be like, yo. But what about all that money? Man, money is not every fucking thing. Money it's, does not buy happiness. Money does not buy peace of fucking mind. When will y'all learn that shit? You know when you learn it? When you get money. When you get fucking money. You can't buy- know that unless you get some money. Yeah. You're right. Nah, you fucking right. Yo, I was thinking about that shit. It made me think about LeBron. I actually posted that. People got mad. I didn't even, I didn't even think. I, I forget that you can't mention LeBron and Michael. I was not making a comparison about them as athletes. There is uh, no yeah, comparison. Yeah, I saw that anymore. post. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, w- I was talking about just mental fortitude. But explain the I, post, though, for everybody who didn't see it. Well, I was talking. Well, let me, let me. You were like, what? Like, could Jordan survive in the social media age uh, now? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it verbatim because right. um, I just want to be clear about what the fuck I was saying. Because people would just be mad about every goddamn thing. Not that I give a fuck, but you know. I can bring it up unless you don't. Unless you got, I got, I got my laptop right here, baby. I just got to get back to Sunday. I don't tweet that much, so it should it should be coming up soon. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, I said. Can you imagine if MJ came up in the social media era? I said, watching the media pressure Jordan was under during that first three peat makes you respect LeBron even more for staying sane his entire career. And when you look at LeBron and Michael, they didn't have the same trajectory as far as how they came into the league. LeBron had the spotlight on him since high school in a real way. Right. Like they, they was calling him the chosen one in high school. Right. And so literally his first game in the NBA, he had all those bright lights around him. And then he actually started succeeding. Right. But now he's living up to expectations. So everything grows. Now you become the biggest ball player of this modern era. Right. Yeah. But not only do you got to deal with traditional media, you got to deal with social media. Mm. And the thing that hurts LeBron the most, or I think that put more pressure on him than Jordan. LeBron wasn't winning. When Jordan win, you shut the fucking critics up. Mm. When LeBron wins, whatever you was getting multiplies times 100. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm just like, damn, for LeBron to have the mental fortitude to hear all of this noise, 
all of the time from the critics, from people, from everybody, but still go out there and perform, right? Even if he's not winning championships every year, but just to go out there every night and still average 25, 28, 14, whatever the fuck he's doing, that's commendable, right. bro. That's fucking commendable. Yeah, it is, man. It's uh, there was some there was some fucking bars in there that Jordan really gave us, and uh, that one thing about um, uh, uh, the one thing about like you're never gonna satisfy everyone. I think you you'll never do everything that they want you to do. So if your goal is to try to satisfy every them, you will always fail. Ooh. Because you know what I'm saying, like. Because he's like, if I just want to focus on basketball, of course, the basketball fans are going to be happy. But the people who want me to be an activist are going to be pissed. If I just focus on activism, then the people who just want me to, quote unquote, you know, shut up and dribble or whatever it is, are going to be pissed. Right. And I think he learned that shit the hard way. But low key, you have to satisfy yourself. Absolutely. I think we all have a problem with um, variety. Right. Um, I think we have a problem with variety because when we see something, right? Like say Muhammad Ali is this great athlete who sets a certain bar, right? right? Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a certain kind of athlete who sets a certain bar. Bill Russell, Jim Brown, whoever it was, they set a certain bar. Uh, or John Carlos, these guys set a bar when it came to athletes using their platform right. to be activists. I think it was shocking to some people that that wasn't Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if I, I don't think that was Magic either at the time. I mean, maybe in the future, maybe. But at the time when Magic was playing ball, that's what we knew Magic for. We didn't know Magic for, you know, making stands against racial injustice or making stands yeah. against social injustice. And by the way, if Michael Jordan just wants to play basketball, he's not hurting anybody yeah. by doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, 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 and listen, I think everybody should use their platform to speak out if they want to. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If you don't yeah. want to, I'm, I, I, I'm not mad at him for that. Like, yeah, you can. And, and, yeah, go on. No, I'm just saying he said he made the comment in just, you know, Republicans buy shoes, too. Yeah. I can totally see that coming out of his mouth, especially after watching the doc. Yeah, it how seems he was like a Jordan thing to say, right? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it, it, it honestly didn't bother me. He said he donated money to the guy's campaign, which, yeah. by the way, probably Helped him more than a fucking Jordan endorsement would anyway. I don't, Who I mean, knows? I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but it's just like, I, it's, that, that part didn't bother me. Like, I'm, I don't look at Michael Jordan the way I look at Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and, 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 and I don't like the whole debate about LeBron's the greatest athlete of all time because of what he does off the court. No. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get judged based on what you do on the court. If we're talking on about court. on the court, it's basketball. We talking and, basketball and low key. Like we could, we could always go back. Like the way that somebody uh, conducts their life and the influence they are to other people and getting into that level of power and the amount of people that you can empower under you, right, has a huge influence. And it is activism in and of itself. That's right. What Michael said. Michael said that my. Michael said, I my will actions. influence and inspire you through my actions. Exactly. Yeah. And I think we can't discredit that. Now, it's easier to look at a guy like Ali, right, who was out there fighting for it and he was marching and he was willing to go to jail for his principles, et cetera. It's easier to look at him and see what he did, right? If if we put both their careers next to each other, I don't know. Has Did Ali employ more people than Michael? Black people specifically? Has Michael put more money in black people's pockets maybe has he helped more communities has he donated more money to black organizations like if we literally oh, go oh. next to each other and put them maybe michael has had a greater impact on black progress than ali did without being an activist it's it possible it, 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 it depends what you call progress like uh like 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 financial corporate progress yeah i'm sure i'm sure michael jordan is leaps and bounds you know what i mean but right when it comes to like Social progress, it's it's Ali by far. You know what how, I mean? How so? Because I, I, I Ali protested, and, and not even just for black people. Ali protested of the Vietnam War for people who just didn't want to go fight in the Vietnam War. He was like, "Yo, my people are over here getting oppressed. Why am I gonna go over there and fight for this country when this country ain't even doing my people right?" But did that stop the war? It didn't stop the war, but he was one of the first people to highlight that it was an unjust war going on, and eventually everybody realized that. Eventually, America realized, you know what? Martin Luther King Jr. was right. You know what? Muhammad Ali was right. You know what? Whoever whoever was speaking out against the Vietnam War, eventually America realized that they were correct. But some would make the argument that America didn't 
realize that the war was corrupt until uh, the draft kicked in and all these white kids had to start going to the war. And then all of a sudden their parents were like, yo, 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 why are we sending my parent? Why are we sending my kids to the war? My, I'm rich. My kid's not so supposed they, to fight in wars. And they, and they were, and that's basically what Ali them was saying. Right. But, but like poor. the argument by some would be, it wasn't Ali's activism. And then again, I'm not trying to take away nothing from Ali. I think they, it's they, so they brave. Brought, they, bought a, they, bought a, they bought a lot of attention to it. 100%. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali brought a lot of attention. And then, by the way, I'm sure that it was white people out there who were on the front lines protesting too. They just weren't as famous as Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali. 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know what I'm no, no. And look, you cannot deny the immense sacrifice that he made because he lost how, how long of his career because he wouldn't go to the war. Like he was put in prison for it. Yeah. Right? I just think, you know, I just think uh, to your point, I just, I just think, think you can't, can't deny Jordan's effect, man. And we act like he has, hasn't had a an effect on civil rights or he hasn't had an effect on the progress of black people. But oh, I disagree. Oh, oh, oh. I think that you could probably compare them the if you rights. really looked forget, at it. Forget the civil rights. Let's talk about economic empowerment. Boom. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, Michael Jordan changed the way, you know, uh, corporate entities deal with these athletes. He changed the way the NBA had to fucking pay people. You know what I mean? He changed the way that, you know, endorsement deals worked. He showed people that they can get equity in sneaker companies. Like, yeah, I mean, that's like, as I said, everybody plays a part. Ali did his part. Jordan came along and he did his part. LeBron's here now. He's doing his part, but they all stand on the shoulders of each other. Sure. They all stand on the shoulders of each other. I just hate that the view of Jordan in a lot of people's eyes is he's some sellout because he didn't speak out verbally. When, if you really look at the impact, he's, he might've had a more profound impact economic impact on black people than um than Ali. He might have. Maybe not. It's possible. And, I, and, you know gotta, and I'm an Ali guy. I get it. It's Love possible. Ali, but I cannot take away Jordan's impact. By man. the way, I'm not I'm not even gonna say it's possible. Yes. I know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like Jordan yeah. Brand is a, Jordan Brand is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yes. I, right. I know it's true. All Jordan's kids work at fucking Jordan Brand right, right. now. Nep as they should. By the way, yeah, nepotism at his fucking finest. We had we had uh, all his kids on Breakfast Club this week: um, Marcus, Jeffrey, and uh, Jasmine. And I just like hearing those stories about how he fucking burnt his daughter Skechers. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what happened? Set his fucking daughter Skechers on fire. I'm fucking Jordan. I Let's dare you go. Skechers. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, what? He set his fucking daughter Skechers on fire. Man, get them shit the fuck out of here. Yo, <laughs> fucking tie, he, tie, he said he tackled his fucking son. One of his sons said, man, we was playing football. And, uh, you know, uh, we was playing football and, and we was playing it in the house. And he said, my dad's so competitive. I'm thinking he's just about to let me score the touchdown. As soon as I'm about to get across the goal line, boom! <laughs> he hits me so hard <laughs> that my fucking head hits the glass table. There's blood everywhere. It's bleeding to the white meat. <laughs> all of that shit. And I go, well, first of all, that's your dumb ass for playing football with Michael Jordan. Who the fuck plays football with Michael Jordan? Why the fuck would you play football with Michael Jordan? That's I, don't give that I don't give that's your daddy or not. That's Michael fucking Jordan. Get on the goddamn basketball court and learn something. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. But that's who Michael was. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. I, yeah. I don't know, man. I love, I love, I love living documentaries. Oh, it's the best. I Dude, love documentaries where people are still alive. Great. And they're telling their own fucking story. Wait a minute. Bro. I Let, love let's that go shit. On, let's go on this. This is great. Because I just, I, I love with it. a living documentary, you get the feedback of the people in real time. Real time, man. Yes, man. Yes. You man. get to like, ask got, Isaiah what he thinks of what happened. You get to ask Bill Lambeer about what he We get to ask Tony Kukoc about how he felt. Like, yeah, all document, not all, obviously you can't, but like we should do as many documentaries about shit that happened not too long ago so that we could still hear the truth about it from the people that were there. Yeah, his um, his kids said that they interviewed Michael Jordan three times for the doc. Uh -huh. He said that they interviewed Michael initially and then they went and talked to other people, told them things Michael said, and then took that back to Michael so Michael could go. Could respond. Respond. Yeah, man. That's why when they show him, when they, like, I'm going to show you what Isaiah said. Remember they showed that part? Like, that is what happened. 
and you know how competitive Michael is, if they're going to talk some shit, then Michael's going to get honest about Absolutely. it. So goddamn oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And man. I would save I all it. the questions until that tequila he's drinking was about halfway gone. I'd ask him the fluffy bullshit up top, and then once that tequila hit about halfway mark, oh, how you feel about <laughs> IT? Yo, I, at first I thought that was cognac. I think you might be right. It might be tequila because his kids have their own tequila. Yeah, they have a tequila brand. Yeah, and that their father, it's, 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 their father invested in, but it's the kids running this shit. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, man. That's fire. Oh, See what happens, that's bro? What you, that's life. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do. That's fire, dog. Nepotism works all with everybody. That's why when you open up a fucking tub of nepotism ice cream is black vanilla and strawberry Neapolitan. <laughs> whatever whatever it fucking works okay. it fucking works nepotism napolitan it works for everybody god damn it all right just put it put the strawberry people in the position with the chocolate people and the vanilla people and we all can eat oh fuck dog pay some bills i gotta piss me too bro all right, let's pay some bills real quick, man. Uh, salute to Squarespace. Turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and so much more. Squarespace is the tool for you with beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics helps you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple. And you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, which we haven't been in in a long time. Okay, but they empower them to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot. Offer code idiot. Today's Brilliant Idiots episode is also... Brought to you by Postmates. Uh, I know I, Postmates has been there for y'all during this quarantine. Because other than your absolute best friends, who you probably haven't seen because you've been social distancing, who can you reach out to to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? Postmates, come on, man. Postmates, they've been essential workers during this quarantine. They are heroes, okay? Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you, okay? Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. For a limited time, Postmates has given our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now and use the code IDIOTS. That's code IDIOTS for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. When you download the Postmates app, get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code IDIOTS. Let's get back to the show. Andrew, you got any church announcements, baby? Shit. I wish. <laughs> I wish the church is closed. Yo, is check, out, check out the Biden piece that we did every week, every Saturday. We drop a new piece. And um, I think it's a, a really cool lane that we've found in uh, that uh, is empty right now in comedy, which is like a, a comedy without any kind of political bias about talking about, you know, an issue that happened this week. We take one issue, one thing that um, we feel strongly about and then uh, we just write a piece on it and then put it out and I go straight to camera and um, it's just it. really cool to see people respond to it because again like you know a lot of these guys that are attached to a network you know a network for the most part is going to be a po you know a political marketing arm for one of these you know groups and uh, we decide not to do that we're just going to do the funniest joke and the funniest take regardless of you know who it aligns with so it's cool to see people respond man and thank you for reposting that i appreciate that nah, it's dope man um also i want you to go to my youtube page you know i've been um what i've been attempting to do is you know share tools and resources that i use not just in my everyday life but things that are actually helping me get through you know, the quarantine and, you know, it's not like I can share my therapist with people. You right. Know what I mean, so, you know, when I do my teletherapy, that's between me and my therapist. But, you know, I, I read a lot, you know, and I love Deepak Chopra 
and I love Don Miguel Ruiz, and I got to salute my sister, Devi Brown, who I absolutely positively adore. That's been my homie for like 13, shit, 13 years now? Damn, maybe longer. 12, 13 years, something like that. And, you know, um, watching Dev grow in that mindfulness space, the way that she has, you know, um, you know she, she, she's got books out, you know, about crystal stones. You know what I mean? She's yeah. got her podcast, Dropping Gems. Like, she's really in that mindfulness space. And, you know, her and Deepak Chopra have connected on a real level. And she was like, yo, you got to sit with Deepak. You know, and she's, you know, made a couple of those, those meetings happen. We were all supposed to go to his retreat. Um this month, but of course that's not happening. So I interviewed Deepak a couple of weeks ago via Zoom and that was a great conversation. And then me and him did an Instagram live together and both of those are up on YouTube. But also Don Miguel Ruiz, man, you know, I've been a big fan of Toltec Wisdom forever. You know, the four agreements, the fifth agreement, you know, um, the, the mastery of love, the voice of knowledge. Like these are books that I've, I've, I've read in my life that have really, you know, helped me out. And I randomly, just reached out to Don Miguel Ruiz via the DM. <laughs> like, I just sent him a DM like, yo, this is Charlemagne the God. Uh, I, you know, I, I would love to interview Don. I explained who I was because I don't didn't assume that he knew. Mm -hmm. And they hit me right back. Really? Like, Charlemagne, yes, we would love for Don to sit with you. Like, oh, so thank you to Carla Ruiz. I don't know what, what relation Carla is to Don, but Caller made that happen in two seconds. Like I literally sent him a DM. Like literally, like man, I gotta talk to fucking Dom again. Uh, like, and I did. So, you know, next on my list is Judy Bloom. If I can get fucking Judy Bloom, baby, the, man, if I can get Judy Bloom, what the kids are the kids book author Judy Bloom? You goddamn right. Interesting. Judy okay. Bloom shaped my formative fucking years. What were the books you wrote? Like some murder mysteries or like mysteries? Oh no! Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Blubber, fucking um, freckles, freckle juice. I don't know. I feel yeah, I was over fourth grade nut. No, that wasn't Judy. Oh no, that was Judy. Tell them fourth grade nothing. I was about to say that was Ramona Quimby. No, that was uh, Beverly Clearly. No, tell them fourth grade nothing was Judy Bloom. Like Judy Bloom, yeah. absolutely motherfucking, like helped craft my formative years. When my mama told me to read things that don't pertain to you, that's the first shit I started reading. Judy shit Bloom, about shit about little white girls. Okay, little white future Karens, all right? <laughs> and it motherfucking helped me out a lot. So if I can sit down with Judy Bloom, because she's much older, and they say she got like this coffee shop somewhere, and they say people literally go and sit in this coffee shop and just wait to see her. They say she comes by the coffee shop every now and then, but man, I don't give a fuck if I get to do a Zoom or in person. If I get to, it'd probably be over Zoom. But if I get to sit down with Judy Bloom, I will feel like I have done something in my life. Why? Uh, what would you ask her? What are you curious about? What is? A lot. I mean, just for me, um, like I said, my mom told me to read things that don't pertain to me. Uh -huh. And it's like, for whatever reason, it just opened up my, my mind to a, not only a whole new world, but just a, a, a different demographic of people, so to speak. Okay. You know what I mean? Because even, you know, growing up where I grew up in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, like, like Thomas, my guy, Tom, Tom is, was my first white friend. Yeah. But I didn't look at Tom as white. Cause we yeah. were just two kids living on a dirt road. So our experiences were pretty much the same. You know right. what I mean? Like culturally, like, it wasn't that different. Culturally, it wasn't different. When I yeah. read Judy Bloom books, culturally, those people's lives were fucking different. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Like, like asking, mom, what's a suburb? Uh, Mom, what's a suburb? What is this coal? Cold de sac. Cold, uh, cold, cold de sac. Like, so it's just like, yeah. And even just like, uh, you know, um, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. I, even the struggle of the insecurities of a woman who wanted breasts. Ah. Regardless if it was a woman or not and the woman wanted breasts, anybody can relate to the insecurity of wanting something. That you don't and, have. And you don't have it yet, yeah. but yet it's coming. You're a right. child. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so when you're a young kid growing up a dirt, on a dirt road in Moss Corner, South Carolina, yeah, you don't have the things that you want yet. Right. It's like, yo, her mantra was, I must, I must, I must increase my bus. Everybody can have a mantra that they repeat over and over and over and over and over that right. sights them up to get what the fuck they want. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just, I just think I, I feel like her books are, 
had a real impact on me when I was a kid. But long story short, go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash C to God, C-T-H-A-G-O-D. And you can go uh, watch the interview with Don Miguel Ruiz as well as Deepak Chopra. Now yeah, you-, you make an interesting point. Oh, also, by the way, YouTube pages, uh, do us a favor. Go subscribe to the uh, Brilliant Idiots Clips YouTube page where we cut up a lot of the conversations we have and we put those out as clips. And we're trying to build that up, man, so that they can uh, hit that YouTube algorithm. So if you could go to youtube.com slash Brilliant Idiots Clips, um, that would really help us out. So make sure you do that. But you make an interesting point about like reading things that don't apply to you at all. Like, I think reading a lot of ways is like a form of travel. Does that make sense? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like you get to be a voyeur in this world that has nothing to do with you if you choose to read something like that and really learn a lot about it in an intimate way. And for people who don't have tons of money or for people who don't have the access to uh, to travel, it probably means everything to them. It's like, whoa, you got to take me to Paris when I read this, or you got to take me to some white girl's, uh, you know, house in the suburbs when I read, you know, uh, some Judy Bloom. But uh, um, reading is reading is what helped me transcend my circumstances. Reading and music. Yeah. Reading and music. I didn't get on a plane until I was 21 years old, bro. So think wow. about that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get on a plane until I was 21 years old. It's not like I, like, you know, we drive down to Miami. I drive down to Orlando where my aunt lived. Right. Uh, drove, drove to New York or New Jersey where my, my other aunts and uncles lived. But just to get on a plane to actually travel for myself, I didn't do that till I was 21. Fucking Were you nervous when you did it? Like, what was that reaction at first? Uh, it was after 9-11. So hell fucking yeah. It was <laughs> after 9-11. First time I ever got on a plane was after 9-11 happened. And, and so what was going on? Uh, actually, it was interesting because my, my, my OG, Dr. Robert Evans, Dr. Robert Evans actually said, are you kidding me? It's the safest time to fucking fly right now. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that's what I did. I had my little cloth suitcase. I remember that vividly. I remember landing at the airport, getting my luggage and him, Dr. Evans laughing at me like a motherfucker because I had like, I never traveled. I had like my mom's old suitcase. ass fucking cloth suitcase. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I know I look fucking crazy, but I never had traveled. So it was like, it was just something new. So I wasn't nervous per se. It was I feel just a like, new experience. I feel like when we do things as kids, right? Like we forget the initial emotions we've had with them. You know, like the first time I went swimming, I can't remember it. So I can't remember what it was like to just be in water and floating. Like, and then it's just become part of who I am, right? So I'm curious at 21, the first time you're flying, like, are you looking out the window scared shitless? Like, are you accepting what this is? Sure, Could you I'm really sure. react or relax at all when you're in the air? I think I might. I'm sure I had a panic attack. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me, it just felt, it felt, I remember having a feeling of like, I was really um, accomplishing shit in life because I was, uh, I was doing full-time radio on Hot 98.9 in Charleston, South Carolina at the time. So I used to do Monday through Friday, seven to midnight. I was only making 19 grand a year, but I didn't give a fuck. I was the man in my city. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Right. Um, uh, you can ask all the bad bitches and all the real niggas. Uh, and then... Um, and all the what? All the bad bitches and all the real what? It's <laughs> a T.I. line. Uh, I'm the man in my city. Ain't nobody fucking with me. You can ask the bad bitches and all the real niggas. I'm a known drug dealer. I always had killers and the thugs and the killers was all in class with me. But I flew to New York from Charleston and I just felt like the man. <laughs> and I was going to New York because I was doing a and for Never So Deep Records at the time. You know, which was a record label that was a subsidiary of MCA. I just really felt like I was moving in life. That's what I, that's how I honestly felt. That's what I remember feeling. I remember feeling like, oh shit, I'm in New York. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, I'm living, I'm living that life. And I had a hundred dollars. I had a hundred dollars the whole time I was here in New York. How long were you here? Shit, I think I was here for like four days. Four fucking days for a hundred dollars. And I remember the first day, me and my dude, DJ Bless, salute to DJ Bless, we went into the, I don't know if it was a bodega, it was some type of store in New York. We ordered like hoagies. And that shit was like $15. And I was like, I ain't gonna make it for four fucking days. If this how this, if this, how this shit is going, I'm not gonna be able to fucking make it. If hoagies are fucking $15, it's the first fucking day I've been here for two hours. This shit ain't gonna cut it, bro. So, yeah, I don't know. It, that's interesting, right? That whole feeling of um, what the first time feels like. I always feel like that first time you don't really have any emotions towards anything. If 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 you're not 
if somebody doesn't sour you to the experience, right? If somebody doesn't tell you what they expect, you don't really have no expectations of shit. Right. I don't think so anyway. I think your expectations are built up uh, based on what you like see and hear, right? So you've seen and heard people fly and talk about it. And probably all the times you saw people flying in movies, it was like some... You know, plane crash yep. or <laughs> this, was after, this was after 9-11. Yeah. yeah so that's all you're thinking about. And that's going to inform your feelings in a moment. Absolutely. Let's, let's do some shit you won't care about next week. Oh, man. yeah. What you got? And did you um, deep dive? I mean, the deep dive can either be the Bulls thing. or Oh, I got a good deep dive, bro. OK. Holy fucking shit. By the way, we can deep dive more than once in the podcast. Facts. We can deep dive a few times. OK, go. Man, 50 Cent had a, a, a conversation with our guy, Van Layton. Okay. And um, Van asked him, does he love his son, his first son? And 50 said, I used to, right? And he said, he went on to quote his grandfather. He said, if it slithers like a snake, is it a snake or do you need to be bit? And, but what 50 said that was so interesting to me, 50 said, um, I guess you got to ask yourself the question, how long do you continue to love something that doesn't love you back? Ooh, it's a great fucking question. I mean, the answer to that question is if it's your kid until you die. Yeah, right. That's your kid, bro. It's it's different. You can't abandon that kid. If he doesn't love you, you have to understand he's a child. You know, he's a child and children, you know, correct their ways. But children can be a pain in the ass. And I'm sure he has his reasons for not liking his dad. I bet you a lot of the reasons have to do with the baby mother, though. Sure. Because you never know what the baby mother has put in the child's head over the years. Because a lot of times it's, it's like a transfer of energy, right? You're mad at the father. The father ain't shit. The person that's around you all the time is your child. The child is witnessing y'all argue. The mm-hmm. child is witnessing you tell your homegirls and other family members how he ain't shit. And, you know, eventually that pain you feel because you don't like your, the father sometimes can go into the child. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I respect it. I get why any child would ride with the mom. But I think a guy like, uh, the, the, you know, the young brother, 50, um, I think his name is Marquise. I think Marquise, you know, God, God, God forbid, because, you know, I want everybody to have, have kids with the person they plan to marry. But if he does have a baby's mother one day. He going to understand. The baby, the, baby mother, the baby mother puts him on, on that kind of pressure, under that kind of pressure. I think he'll understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've seen that happen a million times. I've seen sons hate the fathers until they get put in that position and then they understand the dynamic between a father and a mother, right? They understand that shit ain't sweet. Mm. They understand that, look, son, I'm not around you because I don't love you. I'm mm. not around you because she won't let me. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not just abandoning you. I'm not coming around because she won't give me that she won't allow me to right you know? so I, I i think that um yeah i think that is the thing what do you what do you think about when do you stop loving something i mean i would hope back? that i never could stop loving my kid i really would hope that and i'd hope i'd have the wisdom to go one day he's gonna understand this and i would never want to say something on a podcast like i don't love him anymore because yeah. he's gonna hear that shit and what Loki, about, if you're saying it on a podcast you want him to hear it what about outside of kids, though? Because this can this can go into oh, you know, people who it. have dreams. Nah, fuck it, you're dead to me. If you if you're a snake and you <laughs> hold on, if somebody if somebody is disloyal to me oh, and yeah, is yeah, a yeah. snake to me, oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, loving yeah. him forever. You got nah. what is it called? My love is conditional, bro. My love is absolutely got come on, conditional. man. I don't play that shit. Uh-uh. I have a oh God, what'd you say, Taylor? No, I have a question. What if your son or child um, did something like against the law? Like, like what? So they kill someone or they rape someone or whatever. Like, can you still love that person? I don't think that you can turn it off. Stop. Stop. I don't think you can turn it off. Like, if you love them, you love them. You, you could be mad at them and angry at them and pissed off at them and disappointed and embarrassed and all of that shit. But that's still your fucking child. That's why I always say if your mother abandons you, you really a piece of shit. Cause don't nobody love you unconditionally like a fucking mom. Like your mom, if, though. If, That's if, a if, fact. If your mom, if your mom cuts you off, you really a piece of shit, bro. Yeah. 
No, nah, that's too far. If your mom cuts you off, that's that's too far. Yeah, too but yeah, I hear what far. you're saying, Taylor. It's tricky. Like Wait, if they do I something know? absolutely horrendous, can you stop loving your kid? Like if your kid kills your wife and his mom. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think you'll stop loving them. I think it'll hurt more because you loved them so much. I think you can simultaneously hate somebody and love them at the same time, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think you turn love off because because think about it. You're always going to have those memories. So even if somebody does something that horrendous to you, right, mm -hmm. you're still going to think about all those times before the hypothetical pre-murder of, you know, and you're going to feel mom. responsible. You're like, what could I have done differently? How could I have raised them differently? Why does yeah. he have all this hate in him? Maybe if I was there more. But sometimes we don't realize that, yo, all you can do is the best you can. That's what Don Miguel Ruiz says. That's the fourth agreement in the, the four agreements. Always do your best. If I did my best as a child, I mean, as a parent, I'm not responsible for what you fucking do as an adult. Yeah. Once but, you get to a certain point, you start making your own choices and your own decisions. That's on you because all I could do for you is what I could do. Something else can shape other things in you other than right, me. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Let like, me ask hey, you a question. Fault. Are you doing your best in combing your beard? Because you haven't stopped doing that this entire podcast. Because I got fucking, I'm, I'm obsessed. With, I'm like, I don't know what you would call this shit. It's OCD? Like, I think it's OCD, bro. I think like, it's comb, bro. I think that shit might be perfect by now. <laughs> like. I just keep doing it. Bro. I be, I be doing that shit to my head, too. I just ain't got the kind of pick I want. Because, you know, um, uh, my, 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 my sister, Tiffany Haddish, you know, Tiffany hit me one day. She was very concerned. Right. About my hair, very concerned about my hairline. Yeah. And um, she told me that I should try Monistat 7 and Jamaican castor oil. She said, take the Monistat 7, put it inside the Jamaican castor oil, mix it up and start applying that to your hair. Apply it to the bald spots because she said your hair isn't fucked up. She was like, you have a hairline that can be restored. Right. You just have you just have patches. I've been doing that shit, bro. I've been doing that shit for like a week and I've been seeing some results. What and what has happened? Did the yeast infection go away? I think that shit is going away, bro. Well, that's good. I think I think my fucking hair is growing out a little bit, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. You want to show us? Or you want to wait till like next week to I'm really wait, get I'm it going? Till, I'm going to wait till next week when I got a nice little fro. All right. Nice little. It's, it's about right there, right there. I'm going to let it grow another inch like that. You know All what right. I'm saying? All right. Okay. Also, shit you won't care about next week. Tyra fucking Banks. What did Tyra do? Talking about hairlines. It's not Tyra. It's people upset over Tyra's old comments from America's Next Top Model. What'd she say? I really, I really need to know who the fuck you people are that wake up on a random Tuesday, because it was Cinco de Mayo when this shit happened, a random taco fucking Tuesday, and start attacking Tyra Banks for old shit she said on a talk show that was one of the biggest shows out. But, but what was it though? It had reruns. It was just simple shit. It was like, they flipped the meme on her when she was lying and when she was yelling at the girl saying, we was all rooting for you. We was all rooting for you. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, that meme y'all have been using for years, y'all think is mean. There was another scene where she was talking to a girl and she said that her gap tooth wasn't going to allow her to make it in the modeling world. And then they cracked some jokes. And then there was another one where they, she, she made a white girl actually shave her tooth down to have a gap because she said that was the new the new it thing. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> she made a girl shave her teeth to have Listen, a gap. That's like, crazy, some, bro. Something like that. If you were a, if you were a person back in the day <laughs> who watched that and you felt offended by her making fun of the girl's gap, I totally understand. That's how you felt back then. That shit ain't going to change now. You probably still hate that shit. But for all you Johnny come lately, all you new motherfuckers who never heard of America's Next Top Model and y'all are just getting these clips from fucking Twitter and the like and y'all are going in on Tyra and posting about Tyra. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, do y'all lay this shit out on the bed the night before and say tomorrow we gonna kill Tyra because of these fucking comments? Like, I am just so sick of motherfuckers getting in trouble for, for shit that they said back in the day, mm -hmm. especially when that shit was made public for everybody. These right. ain't no secret recordings. This is shit we all heard back then and nobody gave a fuck. In fact, it was one of the highest rated shows on television. Once again, I'm going to use this analogy, and I need y'all to understand this. Uh -huh. If the highway said 70 miles per hour 20 years ago, and I was doing 70, now that the same highway, the speed limit is 55, and I'm doing 55 out of respect, because I understand the fucking rules and regulations of the land. Right. Don't start sending me goddamn speeding tickets from 20 years ago when I was going 70. 
This shit don't make no fucking sense, bro. What if we have a statute of limitations on canceling people for what they say? And what? the it statute cancel culture. That's say what? Good. No, I hear what you're saying. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what if the statute of limitations is five years, right? Because a lot can change in five years. Sentiments can change in five years, right? Well, I say four. Four is always a good number because it's graduation. Sure, four years. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So for anything more than four years ago, you cannot cancel. Because be you don't know what you. the culture was four years ago. If it's said publicly, yeah. On TV, radio, podcast, yeah. You got 24 hours, maybe 48. Fuck that. Four years is too long. You got 20 for real? Yo, you got 24 hours, maybe fucking 48. What y'all gonna do next? Y'all gonna attack and live in color? Y'all about to come after Keenan and the Wayans brothers now because of the edgy shit that they used to do? Right. What the fuck? You gonna come after Chappelle? You gonna go after old SNL show? Like, what is next? Like, what's next? Why do we do this? Like, yeah. why do people give a fuck? Like, listen, and by the way, you have every right to be mad on social media. If you want to be mad on social media, cool. Nobody gives a fuck. Right. As long as that shit don't affect Tyra Banks in the real corporate world, I'm cool. But that shit is just stupid to me. Like, all of this shit you have to be outraged at. It's, Andrew, yeah. it is so much shit you could be outraged about right now in 2020. Why do you have to dig up shit from 20 years ago when the climate was different? They about to attack the bad boy Pistons, bro. <laughs> How so? They about, to, they about to attack the bad boy Pistons and say that they were a bunch of fucking thugs. They could have killed Scottie Pippen. They could have killed Michael Jordan. They need to be brought up on charges. This should have been assault, okay? Why wasn't fucking Bill Lambert ever arrested? I'm telling you, yeah. they keep if you keep letting this type of shit happen, this what this how far it'll fucking go, man. I hate that shit, Joe. I can't fucking stand it. I agree with you, man. I think it's. I think it's bullshit, and I think it's, it's true. It's something we won't care about next week. That's the yeah. beauty of this shit. Is like everybody gets upset, and then they completely forget about it next week. And maybe that's why we resent them so much for it. Because we're like, you don't care. You just want retweets. You just want just attention. Want you are you fraudulent. You have told someone that they were a gap tooth idiot in your life. Now Tyra does it on a TV show when she's trying to help this chick become a model. Models are are about objectifying themselves, right? Like, that's literally what it is. You want to be the most objectifiable person. That's what being a model is. If she's giving you advice on how to be objectified better, you better take that shit. <laughs> right? Like, what are you upset about her for? It's her job to tell you what's wrong with you and why you're not objectifiable. Yo, you got a hole in your teeth. Okay? We can't objectify you as good with a hole in your teeth. Oh, you get that shit God. fixed, boom. Now we could objectify you better. It's that especially, simple. Especially back then when there was like a strict criteria to be a model. Yeah, there was none of these you know fat saying? models. There was none of these retard models. There was none of these like, I think they're making Down syndrome models. Like they're doing edit. Like there's a model in a re wheelchair. There's none of these like special needs models. It was just, are you hot? Are you not hot? Right. But Ira also put a big girl model in the um, America's Top Model, though. Like she was one of the first that to promote it. But that was a later season. No, it wasn't. That was like the second season. I don't even know. Oh, that was Takara, right? Yeah. And what happened with her? She ate She's all the craft money. service or something like Stop. that? Takara had, Takara had a good career. But yeah. she lost weight, though, right? But she's still like thick. It's just not like Taylor. Yeah. I love the fact you coming to defend your people. Yo, you defend them plus size models, Taylor. You know what? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you stand for your fucking ground when it comes to those plus size models, Taylor. Don't you let uh, don't let Andrew talk crazy. I hate you. Hey, bro, that shit is so stupid. What? All this shit. Listen, uh, Nicholas Cage. Shit, you won't care about next week. Nicholas nah, Cage. Nah, nah, nah. Don't talk about the goat, bro. He's hey, playing hey, hey, don't talk about Nick, Nicholas Cage the best. Listen, we spoke about this on Flavor too, but Nicholas Cage is the greatest living American actor. And don't ever stop come it. at the go like that, bro. Stop, stop, stop. stop you don't stop. ever come at the go stop. like that's that, not, bro. That's not, Nicholas Cage is not the greatest living He's American actor. He's the greatest actor. living American actor. Don't Wait, ever did, come at the go like that, bro. Last I checked, Tom Hanks didn't die of Corona. Okay. Tom Hanks not even top five. Get the fuck out of here, Andrew Tom Schultz. Hanks not even top five, bro. Get the bro. fuck out of here, bro. Nah, Tom Hanks dude. is the one. Nah, bro. Are you see you're not you're not you're on what drugs. What did he do good in? What did he do good in? What did he what did he not do Forrest good in? Gump. Hey, um, All right, amazing. Oscar. What? Amazing. Forrest Gump. What else? Fucking big. Fucking cast. What was so away. good about big? What do you mean? What was so good about big? 
I don't know, bro. That shit sucked. When the last time you seen Big? I don't even think I seen it. That's how bad it was. God, man, Tom Hanks <laughs> is the fuck. Let me pull up Tom Hanks' resume. Nah, bro. To Tom Cage. Hanks is trash, Nicholas dude. I think, son. Nicholas Cage is a bootleg Keanu Reeves. Yo, bro. yo, yo. Stop talking about yo, him crazy, bro. Hey, hey, yo, hey, hey. hey. You talking about the go Keanu crazy Reeves, right bro. now, bro. You really talking about the go crazy. Oh, Hold on. Let's talk. Hold on. You talking about Forrest Gump. You talking Castaway, Saving Private Ryan. Castaway, hey, trash. Fucking Philadelphia. Saving Private what? Ryan. What? Saving Private Ryan was fire. It was fire. Did you say Castaway was trash? Castaway was trash. I can't watch that oh, shit stop, again. Stop, bro. Stop. The Green Mile, Sully, the Da Vinci Code. Nobody saw Sully. Da Vinci Code, he ruined. Yo. What? Ta- Come on, bro. I read the to- book. It was supposed Toy to be Story. Richard Gere. Say it again. Toy Story. Toy Story. All right, I'll give you Toy Story. Toy Story kind of lit. Toy Story kind of lit. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, bro. I didn't watch that shit. You watched that shit? Yes. With Denzel? You didn't. Oh, yeah. He, wait a minute. Denzel was in Philadelphia? Yeah. Who was he? The lawyer? I don't fucking remember. Let me see. Am I tripping? Yeah, Denzel. I know I'm not bugging. Yeah, Denzel was in Philadelphia. Hey, fucking, anyway. Um, Tom Hanks, decent actor. Decent bro. actor. Nick Cage, Nick Cage ain't got no fucking splash. Hey, bro. Hey, Nick Cage, bro. Let's talk about it. He never did splash, bro. Hey, 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 hey. Nick Cage, though? Gone in 60 seconds. Cute. F- face off. Classic. Lord because of it, War. Because, because of Travolta. Lord Come of on. War. Travolta carried Nicolas Cage. Nah, stop that. Off. You need to Travolta stop that. Carried, Travolta carried. You need to carried, stop that. You're acting crazy carried, right now, And you bro. know why he carried it? Because when they told him he'd be face to face with a man the whole movie, he was like, Travolta I, bought I, his I want it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he said, he said, he said, hold on, you get to be inside Nick Cage's body. He's like, dreams do come true. You get to have Nicolas Cage's face on your face the whole movie. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Sign Josh Revolta up, goddammit. I bet you go look at the fucking B roll for that shit. He had a fucking hard on the whole goddamn movie. Damn right. That's what Nick Cage does to you, bro. Come on, give me some other Nick Cage shit. Who else? Con Air. Vampire's Air. Kiss. You're, you're forgetting about Vampire's Kiss. That shit sound like the Tra- Travolta was in that shit too. Vampire's Kiss, Con Air, bro. There's literally you cannot find a bad Nick Cage movie. They're amazing. He's amazing. He got a I fucking Oscar. He does everything. He does comedy. He does drama. He does action. So does Johnny. Nah, I mean, not Johnny. So does fucking Stop. Tom. Tom cannot do. Tom bro, cannot Tom, do. Tom is- Tom is the most diverse actor of our generation. Stop that. Stop that. Tom tried to do Road to Perdition. That shit was trash because he can't play a tough guy. Tom got one character. He's incredibly likable. He's a super sweet, soft guy. He plays that perfectly. He cannot play anything else. He can play super sweet, soft guy. That's Tom. Super sweet, soft guy. I can't wait till Tom Hanks plays both Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan in the goddamn Chicago Bulls. You gonna uh, let Tom Hanks blackface, bro? I need I need him you to prove that You gonna let Tom Hanks blackface? I need, I need him I need him to prove that he's the greatest living actor of all time and that's the only way he'll be able to do it, okay? Will you let him blackface to do it? Will you let Tom Hanks blackface to do it? Michael Jordan's not black, he's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> he's up. Okay. So he can Mike um, face? Can nah, he Mike face? But I don't know. Can I, Tom I, I, Hanks mic face to play nah, Michael Jordan he, in a book? He can't, he can't mic face. He could do Phil Jackson, though. Obviously, he could do Phil Jackson. Bro, all Nicholas does is action movies, man. Stop playing, bro. Raising Arizona. That's all he does. Raising Arizona. Never saw it. I thought that shit was about him drinking fucking iced tea. It was. It was? Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't know what the fuck that was. Ghost 100%. Rider, like all that. that Ghost that, Rider, all- bro. That's action. Ah. Dog, National Dude, that's Treasure. All he does. I'm telling you, we had this whole conversation action. on National Flagrant Treasure. Two. Action. N- National Cage Treasure, is, Treasure never- is not action. It's like uh, mystery, suspense. You know, treasure hunting. Nicholas Cage has never been in a movie without a gun. Say again. Nicholas Cage has never been in a movie without a gun. Ghost Rider. Moon Moonstruck. Moonstruck. Leaving Moonstruck. Las Vegas or something that like old that. Shit? That old shit. Come on, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Nicolas Cage is the greatest living American actor. It's nah, either him, time, the greatest living American actor in terms of how dynamic they are. It's either him or um, what's the guy who's in Cheers? He was the funny guy in Cheers. Fucking um, uh, Chevy, not Chevy Chase. Fucking nah. Dan Aykroyd. Nah. He played him. His not Dan name. Aykroyd. I know you're talking about um, Whoopi Goldberg's ex-husband. What the no, fuck No, no, not him. That's Ted Danson. Ooh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson and... Fuck Woody Harrelson here. and um and Nicolas Cage are the greatest living American actors. 
Simple as that. In terms of how dynamic they are. Tom Hanks nah, bro. doesn't First exist. Of all, Tom Hanks got nothing on Denzel, so don't even talk to me about Tom Hanks. Like, Denzel is leagues above Tom Hanks. We don't even have to have that conversation. Are you talking about godlike actors? Obviously, I'm talking about godlike actors, Nick Cage. Nicholas with Keanu Reeves, bro. Say again? Nicholas with Keanu Reeves, and nah, I love nah, Keanu. Like, first of all, you're trying to say that as a thing of disrespect, and Keanu it's Reeves not. is unbelievable. Keanu's a beast. Say again? Keanu's a beast. Keanu is a beast, bro. He's a beast. He Keanu made got three some of my John Wick movies. movies. He said four words in all three movies, bro. And, and, he and said all four total fucking, words in all three movies. Name one other actor could do that. And all over a fucking dog. That's it. And Peter, and Peter never gave fucking Keanu a goddamn award. Not a thing. Give him a fucking award. I love Keanu Reeves. Devil's Advocate, one of my favorite fucking that, movies. There we go. The, fir the first Matrix. But to me, Keanu, Nicolas Cage, they're all on the same level. And by the way, it's a great level. I'm not That's saying Mount I'm not Rushmore. shitting on What you're talking about is Mount Rushmore. You're talking about Mount Rushmore of actors is Keanu Reeves, Nicolas Cage, and Woody Harrelson. Okay. Get the fuck out of here. Nah, ducks. Who does, who does Woody <laughs> make it over? Woody don't make it over Denzel? Woody, Woody no. don't make it over Tom? Denzel is fourth. Denzel is fourth. Denzel bro, barely make it, makes no. it in. He barely no. makes it in, no, but he's bro. fourth. No. Denzel do do? can't do comedy, but he's so good at the drama and he's so good at the action that you have to give it to him. Woody did not make it over Tom, bro. I Honestly, John C. O'Reilly almost makes it over Denzel. John C. O'Reilly almost makes is. it over Denzel. I don't I'm know who that be is. Honest with you. If who I'm the being fuck honest, is John C. if I have to be honest, I'm being honest. I have no idea who the fuck Pat Riley Seal is. Yo, listen, John C. O'Reilly, bro. He can do drama, he can do comedy, he can do multi, it's dynamic. Notice we haven't said one female actor or actor. Notice not a single female actress comes close. Oh, Just that's because that. we're fucking sexist. We're sexist pigs. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Yo. <laughs> John C. Riley. John C. Riley. Get the fuck dog. Out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. John I C. Never, Riley. Listen, I don't even know his name. I know his face, and I've always hated his face. No, but you, but, but he's in fucking. He's he was fucking in Ralph breaks the fucking internet. I that's hate John what C. I'm Ralph. talking about. Wreck it, Ralph. Wreck it, Ralph. My he's man, Wreck it, Ralph. He's a goddamn joke. Nah, dog. Those are really Mount Rushmore. I Who think John C. John C. Riley was in. Da I never knew his name. He was in Days of Thunder. I never knew his name, bro. Look, I never John knew his C. Name. Mount Rushmore is, and I'm biased because I love Denzel. But if I was being objective, completely objective, Mount Rushmore, John C. Riley, Stop. Keanu Reeves, Stop. Nicholas Cage. Honestly, I take John C. Riley out. It's Denzel, Woody Harrelson, Nicholas Cage, and then the other one. I got Denzel. Tom Hanks. Not Tom Hanks. It's it's preposterous. It's preposterous what you just said. It's crazy. It's He's preposterous. Great, yo, Tom Hanks' roles are so diverse, bro. It's like, the I, same like, thing every single time. It, it really is. It's the isn't. same thing every, every it single really time. It really isn't. Middle-aged, emotional Bar white guy. Middle-aged, emotional white guy. It's hard to play that. And make people give a fuck for you. Think about it. <laughs> for Think you. About it. Think about it. Think about being I've been a middle aged emotional white guy my entire life. We felt bad for Tom Hanks in Castaway. We felt bad for him in Forrest Gump. We felt bad for him in Big. You know how hard it is to get a black man to feel bad for a privileged white man? He was on Ooh. an island. He was on an island with a volleyball and then he was retarded. You could feel bad for those people. <laughs> you really gonna be a check your privilege, Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks, whatever. <laughs> check your privilege on that island. Why don't you check it? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When Tom Hanks is trying to escape off that goddamn island, his love for Wilson, that fucking volleyball, when Sad. Wilson got detached from that little raft, that motherfucker almost killed himself trying to save fucking Wilson, bro. The illest shit I've ever seen in my life. The only thing I hate about Castaway, they didn't show him jacking off. What? They didn't never show him jacking off. You know, he, he was on the island for years. He jacked off. Yeah. I mean, what do you think he was eating for the first three months? <laughs> 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 that protein, baby. Sorry, come on. <laughs> That's why his hair grew so fucking fast. That's why that beard grew so fucking fast. <laughs> That's what the fuck happened. Listen. <laughs> Disrespectful. Um, I know you were acting a little wild with that, but you'll take it back once you see this disrespectful. Joe Exotic. You Once you see Nick First Cage all, play Joe Exotic. That, that's whack. And I'm going to tell you why that's whack. Why? We just had this great fucking docu-series, reality show, whatever. Why do we need that in a scripted version? 
Some we don't. I, I, we, don't. we don't have to remake like, everything, bro. We don't have to like, remake everything. Like we saw it. Like what could be better than that? Like seriously, we saw the real life. That's like imagine somebody came right now and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a scripted movie about Michael Jordan's last year in the NBA. Do you really think it could be remotely as good as the shit we just seen? Yeah, but who's going to play Jordan though? I have no idea. It's a great idea. I mean, you could go out on a, I mean, if you're going, I don't know. I really, I really don't know. I have no idea. All right, let's do some ask a fucking idiots, man, to get the fuck out of here. Let's do it. Did you, okay, I got him right here. All right. Um, do you ask have him? an idiot. Yeah, I got him. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Mazara wants to know. Does God prioritize the earth first or the humans that live on it? Wow. Does Great God prioritize question. the earth first or the humans, the humans that, that live, that on, live it? on it? I mean, oh so God. far he's been prioritizing the humans that live on it, right? Haven't we been fucking the earth up? I don't think he's prioritizing it. You think, think he's just letting shit go? I think God prioritizes life, period. And it's up to us what we prioritize prioritize right okay. because you can you can live as you can be a human living on this earth and forget to prioritize god right and when you forget to prioritize god you start taking matters in your own hands right and you start you start uh you know being more of the human flesh than of the spirit and when you start being more of the human flesh then your desires change and um the things you have, you give value to change. And right. When you start tearing down fucking trees to put Starbucks up. In, right, right, right. You know, shit, shit like that. So I think that God prioritizes life. And when we stop prioritizing God, then he may not necessarily prioritize us. Got you. That makes sense. Like God doesn't distinguish between the life on earth and the life as a human being. All of it is just life. I think that's how we should approach it. I think if we yeah. approach things like, we're all God's creatures. I think we would move a little bit different, not even just with each other as humans, but just in our interactions with like, you know, fucking the environment, anim animals. animals, the environment, yeah. like tree, everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like um, Quentin JG 87, ask an idiot. He says, he says, Joe, what's your favorite comedy special? Elephant in the well, in history, it's probably delirious by Eddie Murphy. In recent history, Elephant in the Room by Patrice O'Neill. Mm. That was my favorite one. I saw it live and I saw it on TV. It holds up. It's got everything. I mean, he's going in the crowd. He's doing bits. He's just, in my opinion, he's the greatest of all time. And uh, you get to see him at his peak. And he's just a force to be reckoned with. Like, so effortlessly funny and just brilliant. And, like, you got to, that's Patrice right there. Where's the image? Oh. How long? How? how That's how why many, we got how, a picture of him right here in the studio. Can you see? Who, who do you see Patrice in nowadays? Uh, um, man, it's tough. I mean, he's always been someone that I've emulated, like this guy who's like speaking honestly and like speaking. You know, there's like schools of thought. I think that you like come up under a lot of comics in New York come up under like the David Tell school of thought. You know, he's an iconic comic, uh, one of the best I've ever seen. And a lot of comics came up under him. And I think there was a lot of comics that came up under uh, Rock and then Chappelle. And I think I was a Rock guy until I found Patrice. And I realized, oh, shit, no, that's actually the guy who's most similar to me and like the way I think about the world or I'm most similar to him, the way I think about the world, the way I think about jokes, the conversational nature. And it's a, so it's like I've always wanted to be under that school of thought, you know. And then continue that school of thought. And hopefully there are people who come up under me and they're like, oh, I fucks with that. You know, if you fuck with that, you really, if you fuck with what I do, you fuck with what Patrice does. You just don't know Patrice, maybe. Yeah, does that yeah, make yeah. sense? Yeah, absolutely. I just think that he's so fucking talented and brilliant. He is a brilliant idiot in so many ways, man. Like he would. He, all, he, he always made sense. Ugh, yeah. It was always some logic. It didn't seem like he was ever wasting jokes for, for the sake of. Uh, Telling jokes. He might, I mean, I'm not gonna say he reminds me of, but I like people like that. I like people like him. Yeah. You no, know, DL Hughley. Yeah. You know, Chappelle, Chris Rock. Like they just always feel like they're trying to make you think. Yeah. You know I think saying? you guys would get along. Did you ever meet him? I don't think I ever met Patrice, but I do remember um, when I was first starting with Wendy back in like 06, 
oh six oh seven and it was, when I think about it like a lot of us were doing like these talking head stuff so we was doing these talking head segments for uh VH1 VH1 used to do like those I love the eighties I love the nineties shows or some shit like that yeah and and I remember Tiffany Haddish that's when I first ran into Tiffany you know she was at one of those um she was shooting one of them the same day I was but I remember Patrice telling one of the producers at VH1 like I don't get this Charlemagne the God shit. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this Charlemagne the God shit? I heard that. And I was like, what do you mean? He doesn't get it. And he was like, he just, I, he, he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. He Yo, just, I think that you guys would have got along. I think you guys would have had a lot of mutual respect um, because what Patrice is to me, the best way I could describe it probably right now is like, he is six foot, Something three hundred pound black Larry David. Oh, that'd have been great. You know what I'm saying? In that, like, yeah. he's unapologetically black. He is in whatever his environment. He is in. He is being himself. It doesn't matter. If it makes you uncomfortable. It doesn't matter if it makes someone else uncomfortable. He has to speak how he feels. And if he catches you being fraudulent, he catches he catches you being fake. He is not afraid to call you out on that shit, even if it yeah. makes the dinner fucking ruined. Just like Larry cannot. He cannot not be himself. Yeah, and I just yeah, love I people that are so fucking honest with themselves, man. Yeah, he, I get. I remember. I remember hearing Chris Rock say one time that somebody asked him if if what what would we be doing if Patrice was alive, and Chris was like, if Patrice was alive, we'd all be working for him. That was a while ago. He said that too. That was years ago. He said we'd all be working for him. I, I honestly, I wish that that'd be true, but I don't think that he would ever be a guy who could be that big because. He got in his own way about that. And I think sometimes you got to play the game in order to get to that level. And he was a guy who just wasn't going to play the game at all. I think yeah. he was maybe burned by the game or something. But like, I think what was so great about what we love so much about him is he was so raw and so honest. And a guy who's that raw and that honest and operating in, in, in an industry that's really fucking fraudulent, usually those things don't mix. Absolutely. You know, but yeah, man, um, go check out Patrice, man. Um, to jail, Naik wants to know. If I had a roast, who would he want? Who would I want to be roasting him? Ooh, um, we got to do the Charlemagne roast. I mean, I got I mean, all my friends are comics. That's what I'm saying. It'd be good. That shit would be fire. You know what I mean? Like, I would have Andrew, of course. Um, Duval. Uh, D.L. Hughley. Um, Amanda Seals. Uh, Pete. I'd have Pete Davidson. I think Jesse May would be good at that too. Yeah. Jesse May. I don't know. I got so many comedian friends. I, I, I would definitely run through my Rolodex of everybody. Only name I would skip is Donnell Rollins. What? Donnell's the, Donnell's, the, Donnell's the only person I wouldn't fucking call on purpose. Why? <laughs> Cause I know it would hurt his fucking feelings. I know it would. I know it would hurt him off. And I would let him know that hey, I I would put it out. I'm having a roast. <laughs> Charlemagne the guy is gonna be a roast to Charlemagne the God. I would put in big bowl lettuce. I'm gonna have some of my favorite comedians, some of the funniest people on the planet. You know, all of my friends are some of the funniest motherfuckers on the planet. You know, I I only roll with the best, baby. I only roll with the cream of the crop of comedians. I'm only gonna have the best on my roast. You know, I got access to a lot of comedians, right? And you know, a lot of comedians are my friends. So look at the list. I would literally have. 40 different comedians on my shit and none of them would be Donnell just to piss him the fuck off. Just to have him text my phone and be like, see what I'm saying, son? See, this the fuck I shit I'm gonna be talking about. And I would just put, send him back an eggplant emoji and a smiley face. <laughs> I saw, listen, everybody was text, everybody was tweeting me about Donnell on Joe Rogan. Yo, I saw him. What happened with that? He's a, Donnell is a sensitive motherfucker. Okay. That's it. Explain he's to me. A, he's just a sensitive ass dude. And I know he's sensitive. <laughs> so I fuck with him. <sighs> and, th and that's what he told Joe. when Joe was like, <laughs> the funniest shit about that shit was Joe Rogan was like, cause Joe thought we was, Joe thought he was joking. Yeah, yeah. And then when Joe realized he really felt the way, Joe was like, well, have you talked to him about this? And he was like, <laughs> and Donnell was like, yes. And the motherfucker go tell me. <laughs> You a sensitive motherfucker. That's why I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's a what? He's a what? I told him, I told him you a sensitive motherfucker. That's why I'm never going to stop fucking with you. He's sensitive. <sighs> he is, huh? I don't like sensitive comedians. Now, this, can you break down like where the sensitivity began? I think I know. 
I think I know the prank that you you played on him where this might have started. I've played a million of them. He, he talked about one on Joe Rogan. It was like the Which first one? time Which I told one? everybody in the room, I said, no matter what Donnell says, <laughs> do not laugh. Don't laugh. Son. He's a comedian. He's selling Carolines. He comes in there, first 10 minutes, he going, he hard. He's just all sitting there looking at him, not saying a goddamn thing. <laughs> to the point where Donnell goes, I'm going to post that on social media this week. I'm going to post that on Throwback Thursday. And to the point where Donnell goes, this is a cold room. This room is cold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and it's like, yo, by the way, every time Donnell comes to the breakfast club, people love Donnell's interviews. They love our interaction with each other. They love us fucking with him. Yes. Just like they like when he fucks with me on social media. Yes. I'm not stopping. And neither is he. Right. Okay. The difference between me and Donnell is I don't give a fuck. Right. I repost. Oh, I'm gonna tell you another thing I love to do to Donnell. What's that? What's it? I'm tell you what I love to do. <laughs> Donnell go out of his way. I don't know who I think he I forgot the brother's name. He got a guy that uh helps him make the memes and shit. So they'll have these great memes where they'll take like my face and put them on like people's bodies and not pictures, like the person. The video, movement. yeah, the workout video. one. I saw that, yeah. And he'll he'll put his tag at Donnell Rollins. I'll send it to my 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 digital guy. I'll send it to Nick. I'll send it to Sim. I'm like, blur Donnell's name and send me the I'ma repost this. <laughs> and I repost it. I repost it. <laughs> I repost it and I take, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll repost it with like a, a, a nice little caption, like the workout video. He posted two workout videos, right? And the workout videos is this gay guy with my face and he's dancing. So I'll repost, I reposted both of them and put, yo, I'm just trying to stay tight during this quarantine, whatever, whatever. Rips, rips, 700,000 likes, a million likes, 2,000, 3,000 comments. No at Donnell Rollins <laughs> goddamn video at all. He was upset about that too. I know, and I love it. I love it. I he love it. it. I <laughs> love it. I was I talking to him, and he was yo, like, "No, Charlene, Charlene didn't." You um, really got the Black Panther outfit on, where like you know, if you punch him, it makes him stronger. <laughs> <laughs> you taking a Black Panther approach to Donnell <laughs> every time he kicks Listen, you. <laughs> I love it. What did he say, Taylor? What did Donnell say? <laughs> he was like, yeah, because I was talking about like getting one of the um, Bullion Beast, and he was like, and they were talking about Charlamagne. He's like, yeah, you know, Charlamagne thinks he's funny. Um, not <laughs> 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 Charlamagne thinks he's funny not posting my name, whatever. Like, that. like okay, I, I'm going to get him back. I'm going to get him back. <laughs> Bro. Listen, Donnell, if Donnell ever sends his screenshots out, when I terrorize him via text, I'll text Donnell shit like, I'll never give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> like, just little stupid shit. It drives him fucking crazy. And Dog, that him. no laughing shit made me fucking crack up, dude. There was, there was once a time where, like, Akash... So we got this comic buddy named Mike Blaustein, right? And like getting past at a comedy club in New York is a really big deal. And it's hard to, right? Like, and if you get an opportunity to audition to get past where you get to work there regularly, like it's a huge deal. So Akash called up this comedy club owner from Stand Up New York and said, yo, can you do me a favor and give my boy Mike an audition? And we're actually going to prank him. So Akash is hosting the show. And he told the whole audience not to laugh when Mike goes oh, up for the. I love it. Oh man, sorry, sorry. Akash, sorry. you sick bastard! Sorry. I love it. He tells the whole audience now. Mike thinks oh. it's a real audition, so he goes there. He's texting us during the day. He's like, "Should I wear this type of thing? What do you think I should do? Like, should I wear a hat, or is that you know unbecoming of me if I'm wearing a hat?" We're like, "Yeah, I'll go with the hat. They love the hat." Blah blah. blah. Now Mike is the type of comic where he's really big into act outs. You know how some comics they just stand there do the one liners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike is yeah, the opposite. Yeah. He's up, he's yeah. jumping, he's dancing. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's, doing, he's, doing, he's doing, he's doing, he's doing, oh he's, doing he's doing characters, he's doing voices, he's oh. hopping, he's sweating. Bro, oh, like, he's sweating. It. So he goes up there, he does his audition. The audience isn't, we're talking about packed, sold out crowd. The audience isn't moving. He's doing characters, he's doing act outs, he's squatting down on his knees, he's doing everything he possibly can, right? He lands this one, he lands his one punchline. The punchline that it's going to save him no matter what. The thing that always gets a laugh on the audition for the first club he could pass at, right? He lands the line, nothing, and he just goes, he just goes, 
I, was like, I can see that whole shit in my head. I wish I had saw that. I promise you, if you see me at a comedy show and I'm dying laughing, it's because either somebody is extremely funny or they're bombing. <laughs> and when you're really funny, I'm really not laughing that much because I'm so in tune to what you're saying. I don't want to miss shit. Yeah. Right? I've watched plenty of comedy shows and just been sitting there chuckling. And then at the end, I'm like, yo, that was brilliant. Yeah. Right? Because that's what I'm looking for. But... If you're bombing, I'm I'm dying. <laughs> Taylor knows. Taylor been with me at a comedy show. I'm crying. I'm crying. It was a white girl. She was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what happened? You, what? His laugh was making other people laugh because it was so bad. Wait, what happened? What happened? What happened? The only other person that understands this like I do is Wax and Duval. Wait, what happened? Bruh, she was doing impressions, man. And them shit just wasn't landing. And so when she would do the impression, the audience, and then she's a white girl and said, Caroline's opening up for a black person. So she's doing these impressions and some of them are about black people. And so when she says them, they not landing. And the crowd is going silent. And I'm sitting there trying to hold it. And you can't. But the longer they quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and what I loved about her, what I loved about her shows, she didn't give up. So she just kept letting them impressions fly. And it seemed to the crowd like I was the only one enjoying them. But that wasn't the case. <laughs> I was like, I just like seeing the bomb, man. It's just something about it. That, it's just something about watching somebody bomb that is so fucking funny to me, bro. And especially when they fight through it. When they act nope. like the audience isn't. When, when they, they act, fight through it, when they just keep going, just keep They punching, keep swinging. Man. You like to see someone swing, huh? I like seeing them swing. Don't give up. Don't be like Hannibal Burst. Seen Hannibal. What happened? I seen Hannibal. I seen the crowd getting the best of him one night. One night, one night, the stage got the best of Hannibal, and uh, Hannibal goes, "This ain't working for y'all, is it?" <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna tell you another time. I pissed Donnell off. Donnell posted a picture yeah. during the quarantine yeah. of him brushing his hair. Yeah. Because, you know, he really got the George Jefferson shit, right? Yeah. Like, ball to the side. I took his picture. I texted him and I said, yo, um, can you put my face on this? And I'll, you know, tag you, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I sent it right back. I posted it and didn't tag him. <laughs> so, so, so he's in my, he's in my comments talking about that's my head, son. <laughs> you know how stupid that sounds. <laughs> you randomly in my mentions talking about that's my head and nobody saw it. Like nobody gave a fuck. Oh, I love it so much, man. Shout out to Donnell Rollins. Yo, we need to get him on. Maybe we should get him on and have like a little, uh, you know, see if we can uh, make a peace treaty between you guys. We should have him on and then we mute him out the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we should have him on and make sure it's like a super long podcast <laughs> for like two and a half hours. Bro. And, and then just mute him the whole podcast. Bro. You'd be so mad. Mm. <laughs> I think that's it. Salute to my guy, Donnell Rollins. <laughs> fucking crazy ass, sensitive ass comedian. Uh, uh, anything else, shows? Nah, that's great, man. Let's do it. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. <laughs>